Over 85% of people are using caffeine the wrong way, resulting in more fat gain and muscle loss. Look, in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to use caffeine the right way to get the best workouts, maximize its benefits, and minimize its negatives. And is it the death. Oh, oh, oh. You know what's crazy though? I we, actually is I it the way this... they're inserting it? That's what I mean. No, I, that's no a... it's not that. Okay. Justin, of course, don't of course you already want to go there. Yeah. No, I I think I think we brought this up in an episode not that long ago. But I I do think it's really uh interesting that if caffeine was discovered today, there is no way it'd be illegal. It would be legal for sure. It, no way. We it's it would be easier getting uh, marijuana and psychedelics to pass yep. than it is would be to get caffeine because of all the deaths because of it. Yeah. So over forty two percent in some statistics of ER visits. Forty two. Hold on. Yes, dude. Wow. Over forty two percent of ER visits uh, in some statistics. A result of caffeine, and typically in combination with other things like alcohol, uh, but caffeine is always a culprit. Uh, and because the the when you use too much caffeine, it mimics effects of um, it would cause severe anxiety, can cause heart palpitations, blood pressure issues. And yes, caffeine can be deadly. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the LD50 is on it, um, but it's it's a it is a drug. It has classic withdrawal symptoms. When you go off of it, everybody knows this. If you drink coffee every single day, you don't want to stop because you know how terrible you'll feel. That's withdrawal. Um, a an efficacious dose, if you just you know triple or quadruple it, will send a lot of people to the ER. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not necessarily the safest uh, substance, and it causes a stress response in the body. And this is where people use it wrong, right? Uh, because it's a class. It's got, it kind of mirrors or matches what you would consider. The, the, you know, a classic drug, um, you build up a tolerance very quickly and then you use more and more of it to get a similar effect. But then what happens is you get all these negatives, including a stress response in the body uh, where you produce more cortisol. Um, in fact, if you go to a functional medicine practitioner and show any signs of hormone imbalance, uh, you know, what they would say is the HPA axis or HTPA axis dysfunction they used to call that leak uh, um uh, what, would they, what did they call that uh, thi uh i can't remember adrenal fatigue. adrenal fatigue thank you um now now we know it's hp axis dysfunction if you go to a functional medicine practitioner and they test your hormones and they see that they'll tell you to stop taking caffeine because it's not great for you and so people use it uh in a way to where they just don't get the benefits in fact people tend to use caffeine to feel normal yeah just to feel normal and if yeah. this is you if you wake up in the morning and you're like, I need it to function, or you're afraid to not have it because then you can't work or show up for life, then you're one of those 85% of the people that are just using it the wrong way. Really would have enjoyed a different fitness tip today. I know. Oh, sorry. You feel attacked. I, I feel attacked too. I was yeah, like, yeah. Uh, well, you know, there's like, cool. you know, for me, whenever, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into the rhythm of things, there's like an, an order of operation of like, stuff, right? And obviously people that are following along on the docu-series right now are getting a chance to kind of see that with me. And, you know, I, I try and leave things to adjust and improve kind of week over week. And uh, caffeine is definitely not one of the first things I go attack. Yeah. <laughs> so caffeine is like one of those ones, like, I'm going to hang on to that addiction for a little bit until like I'm ready to like pull that off. And I just, I feel like when I have momentum in other things, and honestly, uh, like scientifically, it's probably not the best strategy, like, especially if I have, you know, if you had adrenal fatigue or any issues yeah. like, or cortisol issues, like it would have, and I guess I should, I should preface that. Right. Uh, all in all, like metabolically, I'm in a very healthy place. So I would advise a client differently than the way I go about it. If that was an issue. In fact, I just had a conversation with my niece yesterday and she was just told that she has adrenal fatigue. And one of the first things I said to her is like, Oh, we got to get off the caffeine because that's not, that is not supporting this. Way and again, to be, this way. to be clear, that's what they used to call it. That's not that your adrenals get Yeah, fatigued. He still used that. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, it's really what it, what they called it adrenal fatigue back in the day, because there was a host of symptoms that seemed to, match um, individuals and, and certain lifestyles. So they said, okay, it's adrenal fatigue. But really what it is, it's, a, it's an imbalance between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the adrenals. They're not producing the hormones and chemicals that they need to when they need to. And so you get in this kind of overstressed state where 
you need more stimulants to feel better, better, better. You're in this kind of this wired but tired state. And then when it gets really bad, you're just crushing fatigue. And it's like there's nothing you can do about so it. So can you And this is not a great place to be if you're trying to build muscle and burn body fat. It's a stress response. So okay, let's let's go down this rabbit hole a little bit selfishly because um I literally just had this conversation and um I tend to uh I think uh oversimplify uh, explaining something that I know is far more deep and complex yeah. than than the way I was explained to. So selfishly for my my niece and my sister in law who will be probably listening to this because I'll tell them to go listen to this now. Explain to them when you have this issue, right, the adrenal fatigue or HPA dysfunction. Explain to them why this, um, from a hormonal perspective, becomes makes it very difficult for their for their body to build muscle or burn body fat. What is going on um, from a hormonal level that is not allowing them to see the product? Because what you hear a lot, just like them, is like, man, I'm eating good. I'm doing these, I'm yeah. doing all these things and my body's just not changing. Or I just can't seem to build any muscle. I can't seem to bring body fat. Tell and explain to them what's going on uh, with their with when, their hormones. When you're stressed uh, and stress represents obviously what we would traditionally consider stress work and, uh, you know, relationships, but, you know, uh, workouts are stress on the body. Um, certain ways you can eat can stress the body. Uh, certain things you take caffeine being one of them stresses the body, your body, when your stress levels are higher than what your body can, can maybe recover and adapt to, even if it's a little bit higher, You'll go. You'll get along for a little while as you as your body starts to compensate and compensate and compensate. And then what happens over time is you start to become stress intolerant. So then a easy workout, it's like, why am I not responding to this? Or you try to do something with your diet, it's like, why is my body holding on to mm -hmm. body fat? Why is it that I do these things and they're just not working? They used to work before. Your body has become somewhat stress intolerant. It just it needs a break. It needs to go back to baseline. So that you could build that stress tolerance, because if, to get your body to change, um, you know, build muscle, burn body fat, improve its fitness, you have to apply stress. Yeah. Your body doesn't build muscle without the without a signal that tells it that it needs muscle. But if you're stress intolerant in the state, then any exercise starts to overcome your body's ability to adapt. And caffeine is a it does induce a stress response. Now it's not a huge stress response. But it is a stress response. That's where you get that hyper kind of like. Well, doesn't it also feeling? like override and mask the signal of you needing recovery? Of course. Need, so it's like you, you're now like um, adding on top of what's already an overstress situation where you're not, you know, peering into the body's own feedback to, you know, adjust your workouts and adjust the amount of time necessary to fully recover, adapt versus just keep like spinning your wheels. And And then to add another layer to that, what a lot of these these clients tend to do is gravitate towards slamming these uh, caffeine drinks and or they're addicted to high intensity type workouts like boot camp mm -hmm. classes and stuff like that then explain what's happening with the cortisol dump mm -hmm. and then insulin right well, so what what cuz that was the other thing i was trying to explain to them it's like you're feeling this way yeah. and then you you're kind think, of addicted to that feeling yeah so then yeah. you think I'll, that this let is let me paint a scenario just so it yeah. makes sense for people imagine if you're you're at home and you had bad sleep the night before. You slept five hours and you're tired. You're sitting on your chair, your couch, and you're just like, oh God, I feel so exhausted and just kind of lethargic. And then suddenly uh, a mountain lion walks into your kitchen, okay? <laughs> and now imagine what that's going to feel like. And then let's say the mountain lion walks in, freaks you out, walks out, you close the door, you're safe. Mountain lion left, but geez, holy shit, a mountain lion just walked yeah, in my house. You're shaking. How are you going to feel? Are you going to feel tired like you did before? No, you're going to feel a lot of hyper energy. You're going to feel anxious. You're going to feel, you, you, whereas before you were about to take a nap, now you're on fire, fire right? Yeah. Your body just squirted out a bunch of these stress chemicals, epinephrine, norepinephrine, these catecholamines, plus cortisol. Mm -hmm. through the roof. And those temporarily give you energy. They're supposed to. They're supposed to give you energy. That's why they're stress hormones. Um, they, they release carbohydrates and proteins and fats and start to burn them. It starts to eat away at muscle, starts to, over time though, it'll eat away, eat away at muscle and it will, because you're under stress so often or the cortisol so high, your body will actually start to move towards a state where it's uh, primed for fat storage. 
because prolonged stress that's the insulin dump right that's well no that's that's from the cortisol and oh. you'll start to become insulin insensitive where your body's not responding well to insulin anymore okay. so you'll need more and more of it but what happens uh, and the reason why this happens is sustained stress over time just like if you lived in a in a bad economy you you know economy's great everything's going great uh oh economy takes a crap everything's going bad you're going to save money you're not going to buy things you're going to tell your wife hey listen we need to cut down on the expenses you're going to eat out less because the economy's not doing well when you're in a prolonged state of stress, uh, the body's insurance policy is to store more calories, to store more body fat. Probably because for most of human history, prolonged stress meant you didn't have food. That's what that was going on. So your body's like, let's let's start to store more calories. Let's prepare for this, this or or set ourselves up to survive this stressful situation. So when you're in these this low level moderate stress over long periods of time then your body wants to store more body fat. And it doesn't want muscle. Muscle's expensive. Muscle is like burning more calories. It'd be like an expen it'd be like a um uh, you know a, an expensive bill that you have to pay every month. It's like sell the car. We we don't need to have this bill. Muscle is expensive tissue. So your body's like, we don't want to build muscle. We want to store body fat. We want to we want to set ourselves up for success in this stressful uh, environment. And so this is what ends up happening. Now you being yourself, you're in this situation, you, you're like, I just need energy right now. So you seek things out that give you these short bursts of energy. Uh, caffeine is one of them. And so are stressful situations. What you'll find with people like this is they'll be late often mm -hmm. to meetings and appointments because that gives them a little boost of cortisol. They'll be in stressful situations, relationships, conversations. Um, they'll, 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 it'll be hard for them to go to sleep which will produce more of this kind of stress situation a until everything crashes, right? Until you start to become resistant to your own cortisol and then you're screwed. Now you're, you know, what they would call chronic fatigue syndrome or something like that. But with caffeine, how, how do people mess it up? Well, first off, they, they'll they drink it later in the day, which now messes up your sleep, which now increases that cycle of I need more of it. They'll drink too much of it. Here's the biggest mistake. They don't come off. Yeah. People don't take breaks off of caffeine. Yeah, they don't so cycle it. You don't cycle it. So if you're on caffeine nonstop and you haven't taken a break, there's going to be some pain before you get to the good part. So you are going to have to go off. There's a couple strategies. One of them is to wean yourself off slowly over time where you cut your caffeine intake in half for a couple days, cut it in half again for a couple days until you're completely off. But that just prolongs the process. Or you go cold turkey, but you know when you go cold turkey, you've got at least three to seven days of misery. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Dude, I, you. I've, I've always thought, I've wondered about this because it became so popular to have like pre-workouts before uh, every workout. Like yeah. once I was in the gym, that's just became a thing. And it's like this association of having to have that before you do any kind of rigorous activity and, you know, wondering, you know, if that in fact was causing more overtraining than it was probably for sure signals yeah for sure probably. so it, yeah it's just interesting to think about that because it just it became such a cultural thing that like you associate with going to the gym i'm gonna slam this it's gonna get me through my workout well, and it's beneficial wouldn't you guys say too um in your experience that this is like one of those things too that it doesn't abruptly happen to somebody. It creeps up totally on them totally. and i think that's why everyone like there's people who are listening right now they're like oh yeah that's not me that's no, not me, but it is them. Mm. And they don't even realize it's them because they haven't done something radically different in their life and they were fine, say, a year ago. But I don't think people realize how this kind of all these low level stress things that they don't think are that big of a deal start to stack on top of each other. And then before long, you're in this state. You know, oh, the caffeine crept up a little bit. Oh, the sleep hasn't been the greatest. And of course, I'm a little stressed. I'm going yeah. through a divorce. And of course, I'm a little stressed. Like, I just got fired from that job. And I'm at, like, you know, of course, I've got a newborn right now. Like, you know, you you start to justify all these little, quote unquote, normal things that happen in people's life. And it, it's just stacking on that. And then the only thing that makes you feel good is when you slam that pre-workout and you go do that high intensity class because then you get that dump. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and, and I'm and this is what I tell my my niece and sister in law yesterday. Yeah. I'm like, and try being a twenty something year old trainer trying to tell that client that that's that exercise isn't good for them because yeah. they 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 know for sure. Yes, it feels good. It feels better. It feels else. better than anything else I got going on. So how are you little twenty four year old going to tell me? That this 
this exercise yeah. thing that I do is bad for me when not only do I know exercise is good, but I also know that I feel the best right after I do that. You, like, you know, you mentioned culture, Justin. Mm -hmm. If you look at the uh, caffeine content of energy drinks and even coffee over the last oh my God, like yeah. three or four decades, yeah, it's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Uh, a caffeine, an energy drink when we were kids was Jolt Cola. I believe Joe Cola 35. had something like how much? 35. I was going to say fifty, but yeah. maybe fifty milligrams of caffeine at the most. Thirty-five. 35. It was something wow, like, that's even less. It was really, yeah, it was up, really low. Coffee uh, back in the day, you we used, they used to have styrofoam cups. It literally would be the size of three shots of espresso. That's what this is what it looked like? Like yeah. three long pulls of espresso. Yeah, little styrofoam, little. Yeah, this is what people cup. used to drink for coffee. You know, now when you get coffee, it's like these big venti cups. Yeah. It's massive. So. Now, what is this? What, what am I pointing to? What I'm pointing to is that slowly over time, culturally, people have increased their caffeine intake oh, more and more and more and more and more. Wow. Where now we're at it. It was 71. 71. And that's in a, just a 12 ounce. Yeah. Wow. I thought I thought it was like 30. I but there's so much sugar. But listen, <laughs> Dude, 71 milligrams of caffeine wouldn't touch most people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Most people would drink that and be like, mm, nothing. I feel nothing whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Average that energy drink me. now yeah. is 120. To 150, and they go as high as 300, 350. Now you can get it like a your oh little, yeah, your, your, your convenience. Oh, I mean, store. look at the, the Celsius. Two, this guy, this has got 200, 200 easily. Mm -hmm. 200 and a yeah, little, yeah. a little cam is why yeah. I like it, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some punch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, I, you know, I, hey, here's a, but okay, well, it's important. I know I call myself out there, um, and that, that's how this all kind of this conversation started, right? Talking about what I'm doing in my the docu series, and I'm sharing like how I each time I'm making tweaks, and eventually one of my tweaks I will make is scaling back the caffeine and, and coming off of it, and then and then reintroducing it. Now, if I was metabolically in this situation, it would be one of the first things I address yeah. because mm -hmm. it is with a client. Like the, the, my again, back to my sister in law, my niece that I was, I'm talking to them. they're starting this week and they, they've been inspired obviously by the series and they're like, Oh, I'm going to start doing, uh, I'm going to start doing this. And they tell me they went and just saw their, their, uh, their, their nature path. And they told him that he's got this adrenal fatigue. And I'm like, well, listen, in your case, the, 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 the caffeine thing needs to be the, one of the first things yeah. we address because I have to get you first healthy metabolically before tweaking macros, messing with intensity and volume in the training, all the things I'm kind of tweaking right now. I would do that first because of the situation there. Cause it's only going to make all these other tweaks that they're doing less effective. And so it's a waste of time. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like you get, getting, and it's, it's like thing, there's a house fire and you're like, you have like a shot glass of water. <laughs> this this, this is the other thing that I, I try and explain <laughs> yeah. to, to them and, and, and clients is that, you know, when you, whether you're trying to build muscle or burn body fat, and that's your main goal, and you're starting your journey, your number one priority is to get healthy first. And I know that sounds obvious, like, duh, you know, but you need to understand that the, the way you choose to diet, the way you choose to exercise directly impacts your ability to get healthy faster because, to the point you made, Sal, those are all stresses. A, a, cal a, a diet that is restricting you in calories is a stress. A exercise, like cardio, like pushing Any yourself forward is a stress. Yes. Like, these are, now they're good stresses typically when you're in a healthy state metabolically, but if you're in a state like this where your, your body is not functioning properly hormonally and then you do these things thinking that it's good for you, you just exacerbate Look, the situation. If, 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 you're, mm -hmm. if we could represent this with numbers, let's say your body's maximum potential or adaptation potential, adapting means changing, right? Let's say it was 100. That represents you being healthy. So if you're healthy, your adaptation potential is 100. So when you exercise, you strength train, when you go into calorie deficit- You see results. Your body's maximum potential for adaptation is there. If your health is poor- your maximum adaptation potential go, goes way down. So if you're really unhealthy, it's like a 30. So now you apply all these techniques and it's like, my body's not responding. Maybe it's a zero. It might even be a zero because your, your body's just overwhelmed with poor health. So a healthy body is going to respond better to exercise and diet than an unhealthy body. So it should be the number one thing especially when you first get started. Well, and what's crazy about what you just said, and I love that you put like some generic numbers to it to give people some context or an idea of what that equates to. Uh, building muscle and burning body fat is already a slow process. Sure. It's already a slow, consistent, you know, little little time. That, that, that process is not fast. 
So if you add, that's at 100%. That means you're 100% healthy, you're a good place metabolically, good place hormonally, right? It's still a slow process. Right. If you're operating at 50% or 30%, it's deadly slow. Well, this is why- Or not at all. This and, is why when we would get clients uh, and there would be people that would hire us who've been working out, They've been trying to eat right. They can't figure out why they're not losing 40 pounds. I'm doing all this exercise. I'm working out four days a week, five days a week. My calories are so low. What's going on? And we would look at, you know, all the stuff and we'd say, your body doesn't want to budge. So it doesn't still. want to yeah. budge. And then what would happen, and this is just for trainers and coaches listening right now, if you want to really blow people's minds and you figure this out for someone, here's what they end up coming back with. They end up, they end up coming back and saying, I used to hear this all the time. Towards the back of half of my career when I figured this out, clients would come to me and go, what's going on? I'm just losing weight. This doesn't make any sense. Why is my body changing? That I feel yeah. like I'm not doing anything. Yeah, you're healthy. And it's like, you're healthy. Your body's yeah. working the way it's supposed to. Working with you instead of against you. Yes. yes. And I would get that. When I would hear that from people, it made me feel so uh, happy. Like, okay. Right. Like you, you unlock know, something. Yes. Them, yeah. yeah, I'd tell them, go tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy when you work with me. Uh, to get your body to move uh, uh, in so the right great. direction. Yeah. So anyway, great. so, okay, back to the caffeine thing. Here's an alternative that you can think of. There's a couple alternatives that you could use to help yourself. You could use other adaptogens and things that kind of help a little bit with energy. But one thing that we never we haven't talked about um, that may help is using uh, these scientific sounds. Brain FM is a great example to improve your focus while you're working out. So uh -huh. let's say you're... You're cutting your caffeine. You're going to remove, reduce your, your or cut out your pre-workout. You're like, okay, the next week's workout are going to suck. Play Brain FM in your headphones while you're working out. It takes about five to maybe 15 minutes to kick in, and it should significantly make up the difference. You should feel focused. You should feel more energy. You should feel better uh, while you're working out, kind of make up the difference for the caffeine that you cut out, which, by the way, the science for Brain FM I was looking at binaural beats. Binaural beats is what people are familiar with. Yeah, That's like rudimentary science on getting the, the, the brain to change its brain waves and its blood flow. Yeah, Brain FM is like a whole, if you want the <laughs> website, they have uh, uh, fMRI they have images. composers all adding to it all the time too. So they do. Yeah, it's, it's like, they, it's layers on, pop, on top of layers. So they have EEG studies and they also have fMRI studies on there. And you can see, so we know what a, focused brain looks like for uh, on a EEG. I think EEG. Is that the right thing? Does EEG what it is? Look it up. Um, or fMRI. We know what the blood flow looks like in the brain in real time when it's focused versus when it's not. What the brain waves look like in a focused brain. When they put brain FM on, they'll get the whoever's listening to it, their brain to match a focused looking brain within about 5 to 15 minutes. Yes, EEG. Wow. You know, one of my favorite place, places to use it in, re, in regards to working out, I actually hadn't thought about this in a long time because it's been since competing days that I've used it like this. Uh, mobility, flow mm -hmm. sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. So good for that. Like, there, I mean, there's a part of me that always loves listening to, you know, angry white guy music when I want to do like deadlifting <laughs> yeah. or squatting. What's angry right? white guy music? Yeah, yeah, Get yeah. off my lawn. Like Rage Against Get off Machines. My lawn. Oh, okay. Rage Against <laughs> Machines, like angry white guy music. I feel like that's what that is. So when, when I'm in that mode, I like, I like listening to stuff like that. But when I'm priming and I'm getting ready for the workout yeah. to get into that mindset and get connected to my body, oh man, putting the brain FM in while you're doing the, the mobility and priming. Are, are they still doing 30 days for people for free, Doug? I think they are, right? Yes, they are. Okay. So there you go. Boom. Try it for 30 days. Uh, great way to go off your caffeine yeah. and switch it up with something else. All right. Speaking of tracking and stuff, Adam, I know you're on your, you're, you're doing this. By the way, this is catching crazy steam online. Everybody, people love that stuff. They love- They love following along. Following yeah, along, seeing transformations, and uh, couldn't, couldn't be a better person you to do You need an excuse to kind of- I did. Did you guys see me, uh, uh, this is in our private coaching form. Did you see, did you see me address this? No. What? Uh, okay, you guys should watch that video. Because, of course, this is the feedback, right? Of course, it's going crazy. I'm getting all these yeah. comments like, this is what we've been waiting for. This is amazing. Now we have a, a private forum for coaches and trainers that have gone through our, our coaching course. And so anytime we do something in the business, I'm trying my best to also go in there and communicate the business side of things also. And I, I, and I was explaining to them because I got a lot of feedback even from them, how awesome this is. And we've been wanting you guys to do this. And I'm like, you know, 
people people think that like uh one we didn't know that it's like i we absolutely we we've joked about it for years it's like fitness sales 101 yeah and how and how much people go nuts if we post our food and stuff like that like it's part of the fitness mm -hmm. hack like it is but there has to also be uh when when the the four owners make a decision to focus heavily in a direction somewhere in the business it takes away from something else in the business it's just part of the game like yeah. we've reached a place where that's where we're at and it's not as simple as like hey that's a smart idea you should do that you ha we have to decide is it equitable for the business or not and so you know understand that these ideas that somebody on the outside thinks is so brilliant it's like do you know what ad revenue is on on youtube it's dog shit like mm -hmm. it's not it is not enough time the the amount of editors and editing and my time that goes into a project like that it doesn't come close to what what the ad revenue is for. So we, we have to factor this. So understand that. So I wanted them to understand that. So yeah. so to well well what I want to ask you because you, how long is it, are you into it now? This is a week. So okay, good. Okay, so seven days in. Uh, recap: You lost fifty pounds of muscle over time from when you were competing to when you started this. Uh, also, you had stop. You didn't work out essentially for three or four months. Yep. You had family emergency. Um, a lot of Injury. stuff happened. Injury. Okay, so no working out. Get back into it. We're, we got muscle memory working for us. We have the fact that you know what you're doing. You've done this before. So some. So this is not the average person. I'll say it real quick. Yeah. When you watch Lots his muscle body, memory going yeah. If you watch when you, as you watch Adam progress, this is not the kind of results you can expect. It's just not. He has muscle memory. Ex pro physique competitor knows what he's doing. Nonetheless, it's going to be fascinating. All right, what do we experience now? Week one. What do we see so far? So I'm very weak, <laughs> as expected. Uh, I already had a couple of workouts where I overreached. I expected that I probably would. I was surprised by how little volume and intensity it took. Any to, visible changes yet? Yeah, I already feel like I, I'm looking better already. Um, I also kind of play, you know, and this is, I guess, is a, a cool question or a thing to talk about. Uh, it, for me, I, uh, I take my own advice that I give to clients, like to not get obsessed with the mirror and the scale and everything, especially mm -hmm. at the very beginning, because the progress is slow. So one of the things that at one point in this journey, the audience will see me do is I'll actually start to cover up. I'll start to wear like baggy sweaters. And, and that's that. so you don't mess with your own That's head. right. It's so it doesn't mess with my head, especially when, when I know- Should I'm, we not comment on you then? If we notice, like, should I just leave, like, not say anything? No, I mean, you, you guys can, you guys can do all you want, but I'm going to do me, right? And part of like this process for like, I, I've only, the, this whole week, I've only gone on the scale one time. And it right. literally was just kind of checking. I was yeah. like, you know, I haven't touched the scale for a week. Let me just kind of see where I'm at to make sure. And it's like, oh, okay, it's right where I thought it would be. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, so I started at 199. I weighed in this morning at 203. Okay. So about four pounds. Yep. Uh, obviously, I've uh, increased. I've increased water intake. I've increased uh, calories right away and protein. So I would expect to see strength increases, muscle gain, stability, uh, some fat loss. Um, are you tracking things that you've never tracked before, like, so, like sleep or? This week is the week where I I will begin the process of tracking, and I'll do this in, in layers. So this week will be food, okay? Uh, this and, week, and you're just tracking, just tracking. You're yeah, not I'm trying not to trying to do anything. anything. Okay. I'm not trying to uh, hit a target or a meal plan. Any guesses? And by, by, and the reason why I'm asking you is people always think they're so close with their guesses. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. I would love to hear a guess from an. Uh, a, 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 an expert and just to show people how off you'll be even when you guess. So I would guess I'm somewhere between 2000 and 2,500 calories. Okay. I think that I'm probably around, um, 120 to 150 grams of protein. And I'm only there because I've already had a week of going after protein. Okay, I was 60 to 90 uh, was my guess oh when my I gosh. started. So you're doubling up again. Like you weren't there for a while, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things I, I, I communicated uh, before I kind of really started the process that was really interesting and uh, was I, I knew that I was only eating twice a day. So I knew this would be kind of a like, hey, it's going to be a process to get me up to 200 yeah. grams of protein. Right. I'm grossly under. So I don't anticipate me getting there right away. But my appetite kicked up quick. From like, the lifting? Just, yeah. Like, literally, Isn't that after, weird? after the first day of lifting, Katrina made a comment to me like, oh my God, you're eating so hey, much. Hey, that's a, such a good thing for people to understand. If you strength train properly, uh, typically you'll you'll feel an appetite yeah, increase. increase. Uh -huh. And, and you know, and a, a no thing doubt. that I, I will, I'll communicate today, because I haven't talked about this, um, and I'll communicate it here, is that feed it. Feed it like that, that natural, natural sun, foods. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. Right. But that, that, and that's the key, right? Such a good point. Like 
Um, cause everybody always, Oh, where should I be calories with this, that like, I'm listening to my body. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to get my calories up that much that quick because I was only eating twice a day and I was full. I didn't want any more yeah. calories at twice a day, but right after I started lifting, like now I was eating. And then I just, every time I had that feeling of like, Oh, I'm hungry. Like I went and ate, and all I did was protein centric. That mm -hmm. was the rule. It was like, there was no, I wasn't going to overcomplicate it way and measure things or say it had to be this. I'm not tracking it. Just like now what about, uh, sleep? Are you tracking? Come, I so want to okay, see so what goes that, these layers. I was okay, okay. So first week food, food, Second week, so which is two weeks from now, it'll be steps. Next week after that, it'll be getting diving into like my sleep. And this, what's going to be different about my sleep this this time, is we've had we've had uh, we haven't we've had eight sleep now that I, I didn't have that Does last. Does it keep time. records? Yeah. So it tracks, so you'll be able to three weeks from now look at your sleep and see. Yes, I would love to see. So this is this is interesting because you've never done this before. This part, I would love to see the changes in your sleep from not working out for four months to working out properly. Oh, it's, okay, let me see if I can go back. I should be able to go back and look at all that. Yeah, stuff. I would love to see if there's changes. I should changes have said yes in, without knowing that, like that far back. I thought you meant like week to week. No, or, I want to see if there's any improvements or changes. Oh, yeah. The, oh, well, sleep I mean, stages. I noticed I noticed without tracking, mm -hmm. I noticed instantly how much better I sleep. Of course, I, the I data was will show I was that, quickly huh? reminded like, man, it's so interesting, like how much better I sleep by just getting activity, like physical activity like okay. that in the day. But, and, and let me tell you how, because here's the other thing too, and this reminds me of the the body fat test reel that I, or the little rant that I want, I'm going on another rant with this, like, because there's going to be somebody who's just like, oh, how accurate can those things really be? And it's just like, and you, like, it doesn't matter if you use a Apple watch or a Fitbit or an eight sleep, like they're all tools. And all I care is, is the consistency of it. Like I sleep in that bed every night. It's been tracking my body for over a year. Trends. Yeah. It's a, it's consistent to whatever it says. I don't really give well, a shit. Well, the difference if, though, you get, yeah, but also for people that know, eight sleep's different because your Apple watch doesn't change the temperature of your bed. Yeah. And to maximize That's what I'm sleep. curious about, because I know when I, like initially I'll get better sleep, but then there's like a threshold where it's like, I, I start heating up. Like it's mm. like the metabolism starts more, I get like more muscular. It's like, I feel like I'm oh, yeah. a freaking oven, you know? So yes. to have that kind That's of- That's what's dope about the eight sleep yeah, is that it, kick it, in. the AI kicks in. It's going to change. It just, it just adjusts It'll for you. Interesting oh yeah. That. No, I, you know, that'll no. be interesting. Yeah, no, and so how I'll use it so I can explain. Um, so I'm tracking. I'm paying attention to trends. Like so, like it doesn't matter to me really if it's where it's scoring me initially and things like that. Again, when I go into tracking, I'm just like this is this is normal for me. Right. Whatever that is, that's my baseline. And I obviously want to have improved sleep, so I'll do little things to improve mm -hmm. that. What I really care about though is knowing when it's it's significantly below baseline because that will dictate the intensity and volume that I apply in the gym. Yeah, and I was going to say, sleep is one of the first things that the data will show gets yes. impacted if you overtrain. Yes. So, and you've never tracked it like this before. No. No, I've always used, I've always used like, uh, like the Fitbit or Aura Ring or whatever like that for like getting a kind of an idea of where I am burning yeah. calories and steps and things like that. And I paid attention a little bit excuse me, a little bit to the, the score, but not to this level. This is something I will do this time. This time I will adjust my intensity and volume based off of uh, how that is. But these next three weeks isn't in, there's no goals. It's just tracking, just mm. becoming aware of where my baseline food is, where my baseline steps are, where my baseline sleep is. And then from there I'll make tweaks. And awesome. the, the, the thought process is that, Everything I'm doing right now is a significant improvement of my life just three weeks ago. And so I know I'm moving in the right direction, regardless of what the scale says, regardless of what the mirror may look like to me. I know. I just know. I know what I'm doing. And I know that increasing my protein by almost double, it looks like I'm doing already, and eating whole foods mm -hmm. uh, consistently, and then making sure that I'm training at least two exercises every day, like... I'm going to see change. I'm going to That's move awesome. the needle. Yeah. Yeah. So. I can't wait to, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting thing to follow. Now I, I feel like Justin is doing this also kind of on the DL. 
Yeah, but, <laughs> why? Now you looking all jacked. I was you working out earlier. I'm like, is Justin trying to? I'm what are you doing? Working out, dude. That's I'm, it. Like, yeah, you're no, not no pressure over here. Dude. No, <laughs> you hate that. Hey, <laughs> is this is this Justin or is this Sal more concerned that he might? He's not. Oh, it's already yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> striking it's, it's already happening. over here. He's you guys like, let me have my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let me be. Let, let me have the most jacked guy ever. You guys are just sitting there. Oh my god! No, I'm getting you, back into. I'm just getting in a rhythm, dude. That's all. I saw you hitting the the Viking press attachment, which is yeah, I love. Yeah, I just got this. Did like, you see the new one? Yes, for it. it's cool. Yeah, I, it's got to be the best like mach home machine. I don't, I, you couldn't call. It, could you call it a machine? I guess. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, because I mean, it just puts you in a really good position, a favorable position in terms of like the stress load. Like I'm. So I can get like full extension and get myself all the way through that window and everything else, and it's just like it, it doesn't hurt the joints at all. It's I, so smooth. I yeah. wish I had one when I was a, when I was a trainer. Dude, you know what it is? You get it's loaded that, like substantially. It's too. that typically when you want full extension with overhead press, you have to kind of like straighten your body, and it requires a lot of stability and all that stuff. With the with the Viking press, you just move your body forward. Yeah. into it. And well, it defers real. a lot of that like intense stress, like more towards the the actual like fulcrum point yeah. versus like right on your <laughs> right on your spine, right on your shoulders, you know. So it it kind of like takes a little bit of that edge off. You right? know what it reminds me of? Um, Hoist made a really good shoulder press machine that simulates what you're oh. you're describing. Uh, you sit in it; it's the one that's on the, the chair moves. And oh, the thing. yeah, 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 yeah. And so you it start moves you into position. Yes, yep. you, it's you start like almost like you're on an inclined chest press, and then as you push it rocks you forward, rocks forward with yeah it. and so then it brings yeah. you into that perfect and it just feels so smooth there's certain machines that we, that just that i just like the like the there was a there was a, a lateral machine where there's handles and it's two long arms yeah. you almost never see these. i love those oh, yeah. we used it once all of us at uh -huh. that gym that we worked out at years ago love that of course the nautilus pullover machine we always talk about that love that i don't know why no gyms do you know the uh, and then there's a standing chest press i used it once it literally had a backing, and you stood and at, put your back against at it. At Ben Pekulski's gym. Well, he was this a machine? No, no, no. He was, was, oh, you're talking about- the A ma machine. Oh, I don't know if I've used oh, it. Oh, bro, Have it's you, like a lever press, but you're standing in it. And oh, it's, that's cool. I've only seen it once. Have only you seen, seen uh, Chris Duffin just came out? He, he's like super ingenuitive. Like he just builds these things, right? Like he, <laughs> he was looking at the belt squat, and yeah. then like he created this attachment that goes kind of harnesses over your- Shoulder, so it like actually uh, pulls you a little bit differently, so it's not like completely the at hip. the hips and, and tugging, uh, and so it it actually like you know moves it up a little bit more towards your shoulders, like you would. Interesting, um, you know, a barbell squat. It, it's, it's interesting. I I, I wonder if I would like that more it. or less. I don't, I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure if I, I would bet like it's it more. I think it's different, but closer to a squat. Closer to a squat. Cool. Obviously, it seems like it. leverage wise. Yeah, yeah. but, but I, I, I also think, interesting. I've always thought that that's what made the belt squat so nice, though, is that yes. it kind of relieves that. Uh, True. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, but if, because if, you the, want, if you want something like a barbell back squat, a fucking barbell back squat. That's <laughs> I feel like. Yeah. Where it's like the kind of neat part about the the um, belt squat is that you take that it's part on your out. hips, totally. Yeah, it's just all hips. You just got to drive drive the legs. Speaking of stuff. exercise, this weekend I went on a hike with uh, my cousins came to visit. So, you know, we had the funeral on, the, uh, on Friday for my grandmother. Appreciate you guys being there, by the way. It was a really nice service, a lot of lot of love, a lot of love, and but the family was great. Yeah. And then afterwards, my cousins are like, "Hey, let's all let's all do let's do a hike or something, you know, uh, this weekend." So we did. We did a hike um, in a nearby trail, and uh, you know, you ever have those moments where you're like, "Yeah, I should probably probably work on my endurance." You ever mm -hmm. have those moments? You're like, this, bro. I think I need to change. I'm uh, having that right now. Yeah. <laughs> really, uh, huffing a little too hard. Well, it was, you know, it was, it was a lot of it was uphill. I'm making yeah. excuses. A lot of it was uphill. <laughs> it was a, it was not a hard trail. Like I'm gonna be quite honest. It was in the sun, and yeah. we're going up, and I'm having this great conversation with my cousin, right? And we're just talking, talking, and then you find yourself like. I'm not going to talk for a little bit because, yeah, dude, because the breath's hold, coming hold out too second. fast as we're walking. <laughs> so as we're doing yeah. it, you know, they're making fun of me. They're like, you know, oh, the you know that's guy. all. You know, I'm that's like, a, listen, I'm all go, no show right now. You know, that's, sorry, a, show, that's no the go. comments that are coming that's, on YouTube, of course, right? Because yeah. the thing's on me the entire time. So you're breathing? Like, yeah, so I'm all breathing. It's like, you know, thanks for the feedback. Like, I need it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm not aware. Yeah. I'm not aware of like the squats feel like cardio for me right now. So, like, that. You can adapt that real fast. I like, you know, hiking I got to do more of it it's my favorite yeah. form of you know that type of you know if I'm going to get any kind of non-strength training workout yeah it's hiking. Dude, the, the sled for me, that works like wonders the sled, for yeah. that. Yeah, because then, I, you know, I work on that endurance part, but also the work capacity. 
Uh, but yeah, it's funny. I was kind of going through that as well. We were walking down um, uh, towards the harbor in Santa Cruz with the dogs. I, I'm just trying to get the dogs exercise. And uh, we go over to this like cafe that's down there. And Courtney goes to the bathroom and I'm kind of waiting around there with the dogs, just, just chilling there. And uh, this guy walks up to me and he's just kind of leaning down and he's just like, hey, can I touch your wiener? What? No, oh that. my God. I was not, like. He did not say that. I was like, this guy just opens up like what, like a risk. Well, yes, you know, like, is. He, like I didn't know this guy. Like he just came in with the joke, you know, right? And I laughed, you know, because I like I appreciate a good joke. Yeah. That's like you know, but I was like, wow, that's like, weird because you have a lab. Why would he say that? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's, he's got a, a beautiful lab. It's, it's a beautiful wiener. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful wiener. Uh, so yeah, I was, I he's like, it's so was, weird. I wasn't even with the yeah. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, can I pet it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, no, it was just, I, I, I was pretty bold. Uh, what were you, so I always, so when some of that, I think it's always interesting, right? Like, uh, we all have a funny, dark sense of humor, so yeah. I'm sure you laughed and thought it was great. Yeah. Were you uh, wearing anything apparel-wise that said, like, uh, you know, like you have your uh, yeah. Johnny Cash, thing, the flip in the- Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't even- Because I feel like if you had some, like, an apparel, or like, if you had, like, a marijuana leave, you'd be like, okay, this guy's chill. I could probably yeah, say some crazy shit. Like, like, honestly, I, I probably was even, like, mean, like, sometimes I have resting asshole face, you know? Yeah. Like, People yeah, you told do. me that. Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, and <laughs> I tried. I'm working on it. It's, I, got, you know I, got, I got new teeth. Hey, you know well, I mean? the, the mustache makes it worse. Uh, you have like oh, serious oh, CHP. Hey, no, no, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have serious CHP. Cop fireman vibes. Yeah, you do. I've been You're getting like, that a lot angry lately. Angry CHP. Yeah. That's what he looks I'm here. Like. Somebody broke the law. Can I come inside? <laughs> you, you, hey, can I just... I got to say this, by the way. Can I just say... First off, so last week we had to do uh, glamour shots. Oh, we had to do photos. You roll just on the bus. Let's not talk about this. No, you roll on the bus. No, listen. We were supposed. We got to do photos. All right. We had to update our photos that we use whenever we're going to get onto the shows. Bro, I was know. getting picked on like, LinkedIn, the LinkedIn profile. The last time we did them was how long? It was like eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. So people look at this picture, and then they then they meet me in person. Like, why'd you send your dad? Like, what's this? <laughs> so we're like, we got to update. Just a good sport, and we hate doing them. We hate doing Everybody them. Does. I hate posing for pictures. It's so weird. It's just so dumb. Right, can't stand doing it. <laughs> I'm just so but non-photogenic. But guy. doing it with yeah. Justin is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't understand. Yeah, because I take all the heat, dude. You guys like, you know, oh, well, yeah, it's perfect, like a perfect Sal, perfect Adam. It's like a spectrum of like, it, we all hate it. And it's like, Justin is You know, I, I'm like he's way a, worse. Yeah, he's <laughs> at the bar. And that's what makes me feel better. Like, hey, I could I could deal with this. If it he's, just if, makes if, me if, laugh. If it's is this miserable for him, like. But, like, but so, oh, so here's what I want to say to you, Justin. Like, uh, if you just act normal, it's all good. I try. So, but as soon as they put the camera on you, you're like, it's, I, so it's almost like you're trying to do something weird. It's like. so hard to do that. <laughs> it's so hard to bro, do that. Bro, she called it like, uh, you know, like, I just, my go-to normal is like this. She's all, she's all, wait, why are you doing that? Why are you making that face? Why do you have fat face right now? I'm like, I, I, this is what I do. Why is he doing I that? I don't know how, how many times she's like, turn this way. And then he turns that way, but he doesn't, like, nobody would ever move like this. You know, just, <laughs> what are you doing, Justin? <laughs> Stop making weird faces. Oh, the whole time, dude. The what do I do time. with my hands? At, we least were a good, at least he's a good sport about yeah. it. But then when I, you get it right, handsome. Yeah, yeah, when it hits, dude. It when hits. it hits, yeah, it when hits, I'm not hits. looking. Oh my god, that's why I don't feel bad. It's I want the only time you, the yeah. only time they're even good is when like I have no idea that they took a picture. Those are the best. Be. Those are the best photos. Those yeah. are the best photos. You know, I, you know how much I dreaded that. Uh, I, dr I when I did not want to get on stage and like pose because yeah, like of because that's always been my. I've always been like you. and All of us are yeah, like this, right? Yeah. None of us like that shit. And uh, I just. It, like if the only nervousness anything about anything I ever had was like the fact that I have to go present my visit, yeah. the, the the posing aspect so much that I rarely like I didn't practice like I really didn't and I remember all the coaches that were friends of mine so like that they're like dude how how often are you doing your routine I'm like uh, routine <laughs> <laughs> like I know how I'm what I'm supposed I'm to show right now dude, yeah I'm just gonna get up there and show and they're like and I honestly it's part of why I didn't place well on my very first show because. I brought a better physique than any of the other amateurs by far. It wasn't even close, but my posing was so terrible that I got placed, you know, like third or fourth or such whatever. Such a that. weird. It's, such, it is weird. It's, I don't know, whatever, teach their own. But I just, some people who enjoy that, weird. Well, some people are good. Yeah. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe I guess some, so. it's a form of what? Acting, I guess. It's got to be like a form of acting, right? To like to, or, or perform it. It's a performance. 
It's yeah. a performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you're pretending to be yeah. happier than what you really are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Still, you're, yeah. Yeah. you're really not that happy, you know what I'm saying, when you're taking a photo like that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Unless maybe you are when that narcissistic really that happy, you love, yeah, you're like, man, I can't wait to see They trick themselves <laughs> into being happy about it. It's, yeah. just, it's just funny. I just loved it, though, the whole time. I was, I was laughing so hard because every other photo, she was like, Justin, don't do the weird thing Why? with your hand. Or you know, stop <laughs> doing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what am we, I doing? Yeah, we would be cracking up yeah, the whole time. It was a good time. It was a good time. It was a good it was time. A good time. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. I gotta tell you guys about um I've been using we're speaking about pre workouts and stuff like that. I've been using uh Ned uh as a bit of a pre workout uh for myself because of the euphoric uh feelings I get from it. So do you do caffeine first and then taper mm -hmm. that or is it just I Ned? You're talking to me, bro. I combine everything. I was just wondering. Yeah. No. But yeah. I'll do Jungle the Ned. Juice. I'll do Ned an hour before the workout mm. and then 30 minutes before it's caffeine. But it's a nice pre workout. It is. It's a really nice, you feel, you got this kind of euphoric, good feeling while you're working out. And it's good for pump uh, style workouts when you're trying to get that connection. And yeah, I was asking because I actually have done that. So I'm like, I've, I've combined Ned with like caffeine and it's been great a nice feeling. Like, yeah, for especially the morning because it's like I still need, well, you know, I don't need it, yeah. but I. When do you, when like do you go, it. do you guys go off ever completely yeah. caffeine? Yeah, yeah. You do off. Oh, no, yeah, I just yeah. go low. I will. I don't, I don't know if I go all the I way. I will off. during this process. You will? Off? Yeah, yeah. Oh, completely? yeah. I always do. I always go. I always at one point come. You can tell us ahead of time so we know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not that bad. You talk about actually having a harder time I with do, that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I struggle with other things more. I, I've never. The, one of the things, I, I definitely have an addictive personality with some things, but luckily, the uh, coming off of it for the most part, for most things, I would say. Do you don't get headaches or anything? I, I will. I, I can get I can I should say yeah. I can I can do that but I feel like if I if I do it slowly and correctly it doesn't really it doesn't mm -hmm. hit me that hard I've yeah. had a harder time like I I've shared a long time ago that when that I went through that whole thing with my knee surgery and I got addicted to Vicodin like there's there was nothing in my life like that like how that, long did it take when you went off of it to get back to normal six, well, how long? six months wait a minute you went off of it and you had withdrawal. Like, no, 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 no. The withdrawals happen for like strong withdrawals happen in like a month, four weeks, three, four weeks. Holy shit, that's a long time for oh, withdrawal. Yeah, bro. Oh, so you're yeah. you're feeling like dog, dog crap. Yeah. Oh, for a I month. mean, the, the first two weeks, it's like it's fucking. For me, it was like the worst. It was one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my life when the for two weeks, and then the third week, like you kind of see the light of the tunnel where you're like, okay. But I mean, because it disrupts sleep. Like I couldn't sleep. I, I was just the weird cold yes. sweats and like yeah, all that. I had hot cold sweats. Oh, I mean, it felt like and stuff, the, yeah. <laughs> the first week felt like I had the the worst flu of my life. Yeah, and I and even I'd even rather have the worst flu of my life because at least when I've had the worst flu, I get sleep. Some you know, you're so tired, you take your you Nyquil, you knock out, and at least you get sleep. Where I couldn't, I was restless. I couldn't sleep off of it. So that was like the worst addicted thing feeling I've ever had. Oh, and maybe that's why, maybe I have, maybe I have that as my, <laughs> my barometer. And so everything oh, else yeah. like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, a little bit, easy. Little, yeah, a little bit of a headache, you know, a little irritable. Yeah, and not, tired for four yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, Probably, no big yeah. deal. So yeah. maybe that's why, maybe it is worse for me than I think. But I, I now, because I've experienced what withdrawals are from like a real drug like that, holy shit, everything else to me seems like it's a cakewalk because Some, I know how tough Which that one is. is it alcohol that if you cold turkey it, if you're an alcoholic, you could die? Mm -hmm. Simply from going cold turkey? I thought that was I with almost anything. So. Any no. substance that you're really no. heavily... No, that's not true. No, yeah. I think if you cold turkey like opiates, you'll just be in hell. But I uh, think alcohol is a literal risk to your life if you're an alcoholic and you cut it. Like, what uh, is it? Is it something to do with the liver that's going on? That's like, No, I think it has to do what? with the, the how the brain operates. I think it has to do with neural uh, communication. If I'm not mistaken, maybe you can find out. Yeah, because I... So I know... I know... Um, you know, I've known someone... Who's had to deal with this, and they they they, they wouldn't let them go cold turkey mm -hmm. because they're like, no, that's dangerous. Because you're too much, you'll that. actually die. Wow! If you just stop completely, I, I actually didn't know that. What a shitty situation! Oh my god, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, no, well, that's it's like keep taking this. I thing mean, that you've decided you want to stop being addicted. Yeah. I mean, it, the best part about going through that for me is it definitely gave me uh, empathy for people that struggle with that yeah. because uh, it's it's different when because I've always looked at things in my life. Like, like that I, I know aren't good for me. And I'm like, oh, I'll just cut them out or I'll just, I'll come off. And, and I've never had a problem with that until that. And then for the first time in my life, I felt the feeling that these people must feel, which is like, it's not even like, cause I have the mental discipline to do anything I feel mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. But when you are physically 
addicted to it where it's like, oh my God, like if I, and, and then to feel the relief when you give it, oh man, that was, and then I was like, holy shit, these are some serious monsters people have to deal with. Mm -hmm. What does it say, Doug? <clears throat> yeah. If an individual has been physically and psychologically dependent on alcohol for some time, quitting cold turkey can be extremely dangerous and can even be fatal. I didn't know that. And does it say why? You know, I, because of the mental and physical, uh, I mean, there's, yeah, yeah, but yeah, what's the properties. science? What's the science? I don't know what yeah, that is. I don't know. Yeah, I don't there's know. something don't know. about the brain. I looked this up a long time ago. It's interesting that it's that, but not other drugs. Like yeah. I, I would have thought like uh, cocaine, heroin, everything, opiates all fall in that category too, mm. but I guess they're not. It's I just, knew somebody that was- uh, some Blood sugar? It's got to be blood sugar related no, or something? No, what, what, I can't remember what it was. What I, I, I want to say it has to do with the brain. Oh, uh, they have something like called delirium tremens. Or DTs. This form of withdrawal is a medical, uh, a medical emergency. Yeah, so just Google that word. It has right. a high no, just Google, rate. Just What yeah. causes delirium tremens? Do that. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I've no, I knew somebody, and I know, I know a I've couple of people now, but I knew somebody who um, they just thought, they killed themselves, but just by drinking. Like they would not stop, and they were literally wow. like doctors, like you're going to die wow. if you don't stop. Here are the symptoms, though. If you if you want to see those, uh, high fever, hallucinations, sense of impending doom, disorientation, seizures. It's the seizures, mm. I think. So it is something with the has something to do with the brain. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, scary. Wow, very scary. Well, you know, we had those uh, rehab. Um, uh, the 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 host of that rehab yeah, podcast, yeah. yeah, and they're they're working with somebody they're right now. They're taking somebody who we they hooked up for our, our audience. So right? when we did that episode, we had them on um, the show, and they afterwards said we'd like to give a scholarship to somebody, literally pay for the rehab, which is expensive, so rad. really yeah, expensive. So it's like forty thousand dollars, something crazy, like it's expensive. Yeah. yeah. And one of our listeners called in, and they're helping him now. He sent us a video uh, of his. They're in it. They're right. He's like, what we. Two or three now in I it think with them? so. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So. I got tearful when I saw that. You know, uh, I know. I know. It's, I know. Uh, that's cool. It's yeah. one of the things I'm like, one of the very, very cool things about what we've been able to to do and to be able to connect to people like that. And so one of the more rewarding things. Totally. I have a, a um, funny um, father story for you guys. Okay. I, yeah. So, <laughs> and you know how you have these like, these like dad moments or dad things that you do that you think is funny. And then you realize like, Oh, that guy's probably going to bite me in the ass. A little bit. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Right. Awesome. So I had mm -hmm. one of those. So I, you know, I think I'm being quick and witty on, on my toes and, and say something that's like, you know, tongue in cheek and my wife can giggle and think it's funny. And my son doesn't get it. Cause it's, Oh, he's too young. and goes over his head. Right. And now it's backfiring. So we're getting ready for bed. This is last week. We're getting ready for bed. And, uh, you know, he's being cute and playful and stuff like that. And he doesn't want to go to sleep. He's trying to talk to us and do his thing. And he's like, he asked uh, me, what what do, what do you and mommy do when, when I go to bed? Oh, God. And I, I go, oh, I, uh, I wrestle your mommy at night. Like that. <laughs> and she's like elbowing me. Like, yeah. He goes, you wrestle mommy? Like, <laughs> and so now he's like, yeah. I, so wanna, jealous. I, oh, I wanna see, I wanna see. And so now every night, oh, like, no. it's like, like, and he's like begging to see me wrestle his mom, like so bad. <laughs> and who, he wants to know who wins and where do we do it? And just like, it's like, just questions. Those question. luchadora oh masks my God, I was like, just oh. like, <laughs> I thought I was being funny and it was gonna be like a one time a thing. Show, dude. And now I've set myself up with it. My son is just all day long going, I want to see you wrestle mommy. I want to see you wrestle mommy. <laughs> Can we do it before we go to bed today? Can you wrestle Have mommy? Have you done any of it? Have no, I haven't re wrestled my wife in front of him. No, that's not, because we're not really wrestling. <laughs> well, I know. Oh, you're not? <laughs> we're not really wrestling, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what's happening? <laughs> you, guys oh, shit, yeah. you guys don't wrestle your wives at night? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I going to haunt him. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty hilarious. that Because now he's going to remember it, and it's there's going to be a day so when he's having so much fun without me. He's in his room hanging out, and then he's going to be like, oh, man. Like, it's gonna he's going to realize like that's what my dad meant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 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 He'll, he'll definitely be a way When I did, when I did sex ed class, it's like the water time. bed for me. I was like, Oh God, I was mortified. Oh, wow. <laughs> Once I figured out why they have a water bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not just for sex. It's for sleeping too. Right. Oh, bullshit. It's, oh. <laughs> it's like, just yeah. convinced it's it was for just knocking for knocking boots, dude. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, motion the ocean. When yeah. I did sex ed class, I think it was fifth grade or fourth grade. The first time we kind of like, they talk about this is how babies are made or whatever. I remember having this realization, like, and obviously it was it was not accurate, but my realization, I was like, 
Oh my god, my parents have had sex four times. You know, four times. <laughs> oh my god, four times? Four. Like at least your parents only had sex once. You know? My parents yeah. four times. Yeah. And then as you get older, it's like, oh wait, like, yeah. 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 four times. Yeah. I remember that too, though, because you, you when you learn about that, you translate. Oh, when they have sex, a baby comes. Like yeah, it's like a one it. for it's like a one for one. Yeah. You think? Oh, yeah. oh my god, uh-huh. everybody else's parents had sex less. You like you can trace it back to this one party, yeah. and you're like, oh, ew, yeah, yeah, that was that one time yeah, they must yeah. have had. Or they had them. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's funny. Hey, that's shout cool. outs for the. Oh, I do. Show? Actually, I have a, I have a shout out. I have actually a cool shout out. I'm ju- so glad you brought that up. Justin asked right before we got on. He goes, dude, is that how did you get that cool uh, professional shot of your car? Oh yeah, it was a sick photo. So, of your so listen, car. This is like legit businesses and hustles these guys do. And of like after afterwards, like I go, of course, what a brilliant idea. So people that are into photography like Doug, okay, uh-huh. there are famous areas, especially up here in, in the mountains and the canyons and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Highway 9 is famous for people to drive their motorcycles and their bikes. And I mean, I love going to Alice's, this place with a restaurant, because every time you show up there, there's Lambos and Ferraris and Porsches and cool bikes. Like It's just everyone does that. Everybody goes there yeah. all the time and cruises. It's just a great drive, windy roads, beautiful scenery. And so these guys that are into photography... What they do is they have an Instagram page totally dedicated dedicated to it. I'll give their handle in just a second. And they'll tell you, I'll be between the Red Barn and Highway 84 on Highway 9 between 10 and noon for two hours. And then he sets up on his tripod. And as you come smoking around these corners, he's taking professional shots. And then you go to his page and like, I just, I just tagged him. I said, Hey, I was looking for you. I didn't, and I didn't think I saw him because I knew he was supposed to be out. I, I didn't see you out there. And then he sends me back. He's like, is this you? And he has like 10 pictures of, of, wow, of cool. my car. And then what he does is he sends it to you on his computer. And then I purchase, I can purchase a digital, I can purchase a print. Smart. And so I could, I, could send, I could spend a few bucks and just get the digitals or I got like the whole package. So he sent me 10 plus the eight by 10. Like That's cool. But I'm like, Smart what business. a brilliant What's business. Of his thing? So I'll give you that. Yeah, let me give you the, uh, the handle. So the guy that I bought from, and there's multiple guys, but the guy I bought from uh, yesterday is uh, Sky underscore, Londa underscore MC. So he does motorcycles too, Londa, right? Londa, L-A-N-D-A. L-O, L-O, L-O-N-D-A. So Sky underscore L-O-N-D-A underscore MC. And it's cool. I just All thought, right. I, and I thought, what a brilliant little hustle. Yeah. Right? Great, great way think, to sell photos. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you think of the, people, handle, the yeah. people that are going to get their photos like of their cars have are probably affluent, can afford to go drive cars on the weekend totally. like that. That's and so, cool. and you know, it's a couple bucks to them yeah, to have perfect. a cool shot of their car. So brilliant, right? Yeah. It looks I thought awesome. that was cool. All right. By now, you know, probiotics can dramatically improve your gut health, help with digestion, reduce bloating, reduce inflammation, actually can even help your skin. Well, anyway, there's a company called Seed. They make the world's best probiotic, hands down. They have the world's best researchers, and they're ahead of the curve. If you want to take a probiotic and you want the best one, go with Seed. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump, get 25% off your first month's order of Seed's daily symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Brandon from Vermont. What's up, Brandon? What's going on, man? Brandon. How can we help you, man? Hey, gentlemen. How you doing? Good, good. good. What's happening? Not much. So I, uh, I got, I got to give a quick thank you to you guys. Um, my whole family, uh, we all listen to your advice. My, my sister, my wife is a uh, physical therapist. My sister is a strength and conditioning coach. My brother's an athlete. My father's a pastor and he's the one who got us into weightlifting. And my mom is a former college athlete. So we run all your programs and we really appreciate what you guys do. That's awesome, That's awesome man. That's cool. Killer. Good family. Awesome. So I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, I'm 27 years old, five foot 10, 218 pounds, about 17% body fat. Um, I'm a diversified farmer doing Christmas trees and maple sugaring in the winter time and then beef and hay during the summertime. And also a part-time youth minister at our church. Um, so I get in about six to 12,000 steps in a day, depending on if I'm at a desk more, or if I'm out in the field. Um, this past winter, I reverse dieted from 3,000 calories up to 3,600 calories, and I was running MAPS Powerlift during that time, and I went from 215 pounds up to 225 pounds and a 39 and a half inch waist. And then in April, 
Um, through the end of June, I went into a cut from 3,600 calories down to 3,000. I did a mini bulk uh, in there as well, up to 3,500 calories. And at the end of June, I saw my lowest numbers at 215 pounds and 37 and a half inches on my waist. So I dropped 10 pounds and then also dropped two inches on my waist. I was feeling great. I was doing maps performance phases two through four during that time. Uh, and then July hit and um, we, I ended up going into maps anabolic, which was great. Stayed in the cut. Um, but I ended up taking kids to a summer camp for two different weeks out of that summer and out of July and then I also uh, had a week in there where I think I got COVID. And so I was down for the count. So kind of three weeks where I wasn't doing any training. I was eating camp food and uh, not getting much sleep. Um, and so that, that felt like it threw things off. And by the end of July, I was up to 221 pounds and uh, I had gained an inch on my waist. And so I, I felt like I didn't even know where my maintenance was anymore. So I figured I was probably somewhere around 3,000 calories. And so then I went back into a cut, dropping down to 2,500 calories. And so that's where I've been for August. Uh, I just got done a couple of days of um, a mini bulk. And um, so my original question that I wrote in was that, um, is losing one pound and a quarter inch off my waist per week a good steady amount of fat loss? Should I be in a more aggressive cut? Um, but since that, since that time, when I wrote in that question, uh, things have kind of changed. I'm, I'm thinking it's been five months, uh, of cutting with obviously, you know, July being thrown off in the middle of it all. Should I continue on this cut? Uh, should I go back to a reverse diet? Uh, and do another cut afterwards. I'd, I'd love to get down to about 200 pounds or 205 pounds. That put me somewhere between uh, 10 and 12% body fat. So any information would be, uh, super helpful. Are you, are you noticing you're still leaning out? Like, do you feel like you said you lost in still inches on the way? So are you still leaning out right now? It, it feels like I've kind of hit a, a, a stall, a little bit of a wall, but I'm just wondering if I just kind of need to push through and just continue on the cut. Maybe I'm just need to stick it out or, is it time to change it up? You're you're in a very healthy place. You Just are. from everything you said, uh, you're doing exceptionally well. No, a pound of, of pure body fat loss a week is a wonderful pace. That's a great pace. That's like pure body fat, yeah, no muscle deal. loss. You probably didn't see lots of strength loss. You probably maintained <sighs> decently. Yeah, so... I mean, that's amazing. <clears throat> um, now, you said you might have stalled. Uh, explain that. Like, what is what does the stall look like? How many weeks or? Yeah. Yeah. So that was after July when I kind of like, it felt like everything got thrown off. And so then having gone back into a cut since then, it just feels like, it just feels like things have kind of stalled out. And I have, it just feels like I haven't seen any progress from, you know, uh, June until the end of August and, so I don't know if I'm just, it, oftentimes it feels like I tend to be a person who uh, overcorrects would be my guess. And, um, and so, yeah, I that, actually, that's, I actually that's think you, how it feels. I actually think you do a pretty good job, bro. Every, the, the way you broke down the cut, the reverse diet, uh, the interrupting the cut with little mini bulks in there. I don't, I don't know how much I would change. About the only thing I, I do different, like you made the comment about July when you've been off on a break. Anytime I fall off, the wagon quote unquote for two weeks or a month or whatever it may be. And I come back, I never come back in a cut. I always yeah, come yep, back yep. in a maintenance surplus reverse bolt. Yep. So I think that is a, a better strategy just because at least in m what I've learned about my own behaviors is if I've fallen off my working out, I've also fallen off a hit my protein intake and getting what my body needs. And so the last thing I want to do after not feeding it good for two or three weeks and also not training is to go cut even harder or cut away stuff, that's when I go, you know what? My body needs to be nourished. I need to make sure I hit my protein intakes. So I always come out of a break, especially in a, in a non-planned break, uh, where just kind of life happened, right? This happens to everybody. I always come back in a maintenance surplus strategy. Exactly the same, Adam. I do the exact same thing. It depends on the individual. Like if you're, if you're three weeks off was, you know, eating a lot more calories, then yeah, you would go down to a cut. But if you ten, if you you were sick and you were eating camp food, I, I and you were already eating three thousand to thirty six hundred calories, 
I can imagine that your calories probably were lower or in that three missing week period. essential ones, and, like- and definitely missing protein and stuff like that. So um, that that would that's a hundred percent what happens to me. I don't eat more when I'm sick. I eat less. And so I tend to get muscle uh, muscle memory gains uh, on the way out. I get some real good gains the weeks following uh, recovery from illness uh, because of that. But, okay, so right now, what, you're at 2,500 calories? Is that where you're sitting? That's where I'm sitting, yeah. You know, I would go in a small, I would add like a few hundred calories. I would give it to 3,000. 3, yeah, yeah 2,800 calories, 3,000 calories. Yep. And what you want to see on the scale is not a lot of movement. Because I know you still want to get leaner. So I think you'd want to see maybe some loss of body fat from inches around the waist, maybe a little more definition, some increases in strength. We'll keep it nice and slow, and that'll lean you out a little bit as well. So you'll find yourself, the scale might not move, but you'll find yourself getting a little leaner from doing that. Awesome. Yeah. And, All right, and then... And then from there, well, then you have... now. Yeah, now you've got a couple roads to go. You can continue to reverse... Or go back down uh, into a cut. Um, and, you know, a guy like you, you're healthy, you're strong, you've got a good, a lot of lean body mass, your metabolism is really adaptable in some healthy ways. Um, I think it's a good idea to get to 10% body fat sometimes, to really see what it feels like to get that lean, see how your body feels and responds. And here's the main reason why. Some of the best gains you'll ever have in your entire life coming are out of yeah, coming out of a 10% yep. body fat percentage. So you get down to 10, then you do a nice controlled reverse diet, and the pumps and the gains are just awesome. You, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe this isn't good, but it's ego boosting. It's really, it's really fun. So <laughs> yeah, someone like you, you know, that, uh, with with where you're at, that's that's that would be the reason why I would do it. It's like you get lean, oh, I can see my abs, everything's good. I got veins. Then you reverse out of it, and it's like, oh my gosh, I feel so anabolic. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. It's you know, wintertime. I'm I'm working a lot in the woods, and so I'm putting on a lot of miles just hiking through the woods during the sugaring season. And uh, man, it's it's a game changer when you're lighter on your feet. Oh yeah, and you're just able to move through the woods uh, sure. so much better. So that's and I've never been down to ten percent body fat. I'd probably come down to like twelve or thirteen. Um, where you can start to see my abs, but, uh, yeah, I've never actually been able to push you're, it to that point. You're so, that so your, your metabolism is so healthy. You've got so much lean body mass, uh, 10% won't cause any issues. Now here's the challenge with 10%. Once you get down to 10, 9, 11, like in that range, things need to be much more consistent. So dialed. Yeah. You're just dialed because, because yeah. then things move, uh, up pretty quickly from there. So like I could sit at 12%, no problem. When I get to 10, 9, 8, and, and, and then I start to get, have to be really, really consistent. Like, I don't, you know, my weekends even look good yeah. type of deal. I can get to 10 without, uh, you know, rigorously tracking. I can just be consistent with the protein, eating, making good choices, get down to 10%. But once I get sub 10, it's, I, I have to be like dialed. I have to be tracking everything or else it's just yeah. so tough to get pass it's not a lot of room for error yeah. once you get in the single digits that's it are you in your your home gym that what is that area that you're in that's sick yeah yeah this, this is a garage gym it used to be like an old like falling down garage and then my dad and i uh, probably about 10 years ago started that's cool. rebuilding it that's cool. and so now it's become the garage gym that's yeah cool. sick. yeah good for you man i thought it was an addict too yeah. it looked like an addict that's cool that's great so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Any, any of our yeah. programs you'd like to have access I to? I'd love to give you if some. If you don't have MAPS 15, I'd like to give you that because I think as active as you are, I think you would benefit from having some mm-hmm. cycles of a MAPS 15. Do you have that? I do. Yeah, I have a MAPS 15. Yeah. <laughs> what do you not have? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have a uh, MAPS Strong. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought yeah. about doing power lift again this winter, but maybe doing strong. Oh, bro. Be, there you go. Yeah. Change, yeah. Do you want, you want, you want some unconventional, you want some there. gains in your back, like your, like back traps, <laughs> yeah. rhomboids. Oh yeah. Uh, strong big, is like amazing. Traps. Yeah. That'll be a good one for you. There you go. Thank you guys. Yep. You got it, man. All right, Brandon. You didn't say bye. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, I, didn't, I didn't give him time. Yeah, I got like, one more question. Time's up. <laughs> the most done. important question. Um, he's in a good, I mean, oh, he's just for anybody listening right now, the way he explained his approach, how he's measuring his, his waist, all good. He's not over obsessed. His, where his calories were, his attitude, 
very good, very balanced, very healthy. Um, you know, bringing him down to 10% won't be a problem. You know, had he had a different relationship with calories and mm -hmm. tracking and how his calories have been super low and then it would have been a different conversation. But this is a, you know, I love- yeah, Great, healthy approach. It's a really it. healthy approach and he can go in so many different directions and get great results. He brought something up that I would love to either make a fitness tip or dive a little deeper. And I know we don't have a lot of time to go deep on this, but that was a real, a really good reminder of a conversation. I don't know if we've really elaborated on, uh, that I think is counterintuitive, right? You, you go vacation for two or three uh, weeks, yeah. you fall yeah, off yeah. the wagon, you know, you probably haven't been eating good. And then what do you do when, I, you, yeah, come that's not yeah, common, when you come, when you come out, anyway. most people think cut. Yeah. Yeah. I think the opposite. Right. I actually think maintenance surplus, uh, and then getting back. And yeah, so we'll have to dive into that'll that. be a good conversation. Yeah, so we good, should get into that. Point. Our next caller is Deborah from Wisconsin. Hi, Deborah. Hey, hey, Deborah. Hey. How can we help you? Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Right um, just want to start out by saying thank you for all the content you put out there. I have a huge amount of gratitude for you um, for helping change my mindset and my thought process around exercise and working out. Um, I can shout out my coach, Coach Richard Sauer. He introduced me to your podcast um, about four years ago. I listened to episode number 1565, Why Women Should Bulk, and it literally Boom. blew my mind. Awesome. <laughs> so um, I'll get into my question. That's okay. Sure. Um, I'm 51 years old, and I've been active since probably my late 30s, which started out with lots of running. I migrated into a boot, boot camp style of class. And then finally, with the help of Coach Richard, we started, he started a lifting class at my old gym. And I've been lifting since about 2020 to present. So I've not been like overweight during my journey, um, but I struggle with getting rid of the scale. And also I have a tendency to overexercise. I've made though a very consistent exchange of body fat to muscle without going into a true bulk. So I did a DEXA scan like last January, 2023. I was at like 19.7% body fat. I did another one about a year later and I had lost two pounds of um, fat and gained two pounds of muscle. So that brought me down to about 17.5. So I'm wondering, and here's, if this is Good progress for a year of consistent lifting and just staying at maintenance calories. I'd like to increase muscle. I'd like to get stronger, I'd like to get a little leaner, um, but I struggle with the idea of a bulk. I stay about at maintenance calories, which is about 1,800 for me, sometimes a little less. And while my trainer works hard with me on helping me with my mindset, I can't seem to tolerate an increase in the scale or just the feeling of, I guess, adding too many calories or eating too much. So where would you go from here and what would I expect in regards to good progress? Great question, Deborah. Great, great question. You know, our generation, we're in the same generation, really, really messed up uh, women in particular when it comes to weight on the scale and et cetera. And it's funny because the younger generation we're getting these listeners now that are you know, kids and you hear these girls talk about wanting to be muscle mommies and wanting to build. And I love it. I absolutely love it. But our generation got hammered with terrible, right. terrible messaging. So first off, yeah, yeah. You're, you're crushing. You're killing it. Okay. You, you're, you were lean anyway. 19% body fat is very lean. Then you got down to 17 just by staying consistent. Um, and I, I can I can guess right now that you're probably extremely consistent with your workouts. Very right? consistent. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you're going to miss them. Okay, so I'm going to give you some advice that I think- I'm like you, Sal. I can't miss them. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to give you some advice that is going to give you exceptional results, but it's going to be really hard for you. Now, you can keep doing what you're doing, but if you want to go to the next level, the next level of maturity with fitness, your, your body, how it feels, your hormones, your energy, I'm going to tell you to stop weighing yourself, stop worrying about your calories, get stronger the gym- and eat when you're hungry and lean into that. Lean into growing, but don't weigh yourself because that's going to mess up your head. Now, here's what you're going to feel from that. You're going to feel amazing. You're going to feel so strong, so energetic, and you're going to look really good. Now, 17% body fat for a woman sometimes, oftentimes, causes hormonal changes that are not necessarily favorable. Your body probably likes to sit with a good amount of muscle closer to something like 20, 22% body fat. 
It gives you, it's just going to make you feel better. Your joints are going to feel more lubricated. You're going to feel stronger. Your skin's going to feel different. A lot of things are going to feel different and better, but we got to get rid of the scale and we got to take the foot off of the gas when it comes to measuring and tracking everything. Now you can keep working out and just try to get your mindset around the strength because you're going to love that. You're going to be like, oh my God, I'm lifting more weight. I'm, I'm pressing more. I'm pulling more. I feel so strong. I feel so energetic. My libido is amazing. Like all these great things are going to happen. But if you weigh yourself and you see it go up five pounds, it's going to set you back. I know that. So the next level for you is to relax into what you're doing and relax into growing a little bit. Go ahead and grow a little bit. You got to, don't worry about gaining tons of body fat. It's not going to happen to you. I can guarantee you that right now. I know you're not going to gain a lot of body fat, but I would not weigh myself and feed myself, eat and get strong and then watch what happens. Watch what happens to your body, your mind, your hormones, everything. All right. So, Deborah, I, I I like a little um, more clarity of what you want because you're at a place uh, I would consider was my goal for all of my clients uh, to get to where you're at. You're that consistent. You've got an incredible amount of good muscle. You eat in this kind of maintenance type of surplus, balanced, you know, eating. I mean, you're you literally are uh, like a, a shining, perfect example of what I'm trying to drive most of my clients to get to. What is it you're seeking? Like, what do you want? Uh, whether that be phys physically, mentally, spiritually, strength. Like, what's what are you seeking? So, I think a little more muscle development. Um, I guess definition, a little bit more definition. Um, mentally, like, I'd love to say I want to get rid of the scale, but it is like a comfort, right? Like it kind of keeps me, I feel like in my parameters in my head, which I know I need to like work on letting go. That's, um, I should probably just throw them out, but that's so scary. <laughs> so I guess muscle growth, like to be, a, to see more definition and a, I know I probably, shouldn't want to get a little leaner, but I kind of would like to see if I could go there, even if I can't or so, shouldn't maintain it. So, so first of all, you're already doing that. Now, at you're doing it at a nice, very healthy, slow rate. If you wanted that faster, then it's going to mess with you psychologically because the answer would be allow yourself to eat in a greater surplus. You put on a okay. little bit, you put on a little bit of body fat. You're going to look a little softer but that's what your body needs if you want to accelerate this muscle building process. And so if so, we got to get comfortable. I think Sal's advice of dropping the scale, I would even say drop the body fat percentage testing. I wouldn't want you to test anything. I'd say, let if I'm coach, I'm saying, this is our new calorie intake. Let's go get it. I, I, I expect you to be a little softer, but what I want to see is energy, strength, like all that stuff going up that I know we're building muscle and then say in, you know, four months I go, okay, now we can go in a, in a cut for a little bit and then we can lean out and carve away and reveal the hard work that you've done. But psychologically, you'll have to get past that part of the, the bulking process will make you look softer for a period of time before you decide to cut unless you want to do it the way you're doing it which is just a which is okay also it's just a much slower approach of kind of hovering cool. around maintenance because what's really happening is you're having periods of time where you're in just a slight surplus that's giving you enough calories to build some muscle a majority of the time you're probably maintenance or below and you're cutting and leaning out which results in this beautiful you built two pounds of muscle you burned two pounds of body fat and you've got leaner this year that's kind of, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to accelerate that, you also will have to get over the hurdle of, for a period of time, I'm going to look less lean because that's part of the process. I'm in a surplus most of the time. You're going to you're gonna have that momentarily. Deborah, you're, you're starting to also, you're also starting to dip into the body fat range where you almost always see hormone imbalances start to develop with women. So can you get leaner? Yeah. Will you start to notice negative effects from it? You, I, Yes, I, I would say yes. I'd say you probably will. I, I don't ever like to get women le leaner than 17% for the most part um, because then we start to notice issues with estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, growth hormone. You know, the body starts to really resist and things start to get a little, little wonky. 
Now, as far as the scale is concerned, I'm going to tell you right now, just straight up, it is robbing you of the joy that you can really get from what you're doing. Now, you say it's comfort. It's bringing you comfort. This is what you'll hear from people with, with, with dysfunctional relationships. Why don't you leave that person? Oh, it's comfortable. It's, it's something I know. It keeps me... So, it, so you're scared, but I'm, t I'm telling you what's on the other end of this is a new level of joy that you're going to get from, from fitness. In other words, you're in an abusive relationship with the scale. That's true. <laughs> and listen, and I know this because you're afraid of, of, not, of not weighing yourself. And it, look, if this, this might help, why don't you do this? Give yourself 90 days. Okay, in 90 days, I'll weigh myself if you really need that. But uh, what you're going to find is, wow, I feel way better. Like this is way better to not worry about what's happening or you're so consistent. I wouldn't be worried at all about you going off the rails. You've been doing this since your late thir late thirties. Uh, I can tell by the way you're talking, like this is a part of your life, but there's, Absolutely. There, and when I, that's why I mentioned your fitness maturity. There's levels of, of development that come from a fitness journey and the, the next level for you is a, is a far more relaxed, more joyful freedom freedom that comes from what you're doing. The side effect of which being, and I'll tell you right now, you're going to look and feel better. Yeah, that's the irony of the whole thing. The the more you let go, the the better your body's going to look. I have to trust you on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, for, and, and re, keep in mind. Because for, can, I, can I ask you something? Like, given my age, there's this part of me that thinks like, you know, I, I know because I've listened to you, obviously, that the, you know, letting yourself go into a surplus, maybe add a little body fat, but then that's will convert hopefully to muscle. Right. But there's this part of me too, that worries about like I'm 51. I'm not sure if it works for people at 51. <laughs> it works for everybody. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Here's yeah. here. Okay. Here's, here's the thing you need okay. to, here's the thing considering your age, although it's, uh, it, this is a small consideration for you. So I'm talking to you now. Okay. I'm not talking to the average mm -hmm. 51 year old that is inactive and eats whatever and doesn't work out and is on 50 million right. Different you know, prescriptions. Yeah. This is for you. Okay. For you, the okay. risk, the risk for you is actually going to be getting too lean. I'm going to tell you right now. Mm -hmm. If you start to, if you continue to kind of go and, and, and get leaner and leaner and leaner, the hormone effects that you will get can will potentially throw you into a place where you're going to hate, you're not going to like it. And it'll be very tough to come out of because you're already so lean. You're already 17%. Where do you want to go, 15? I can almost guarantee you that we're going to see some negative effects on your hormones if we continue moving in that direction. So you're actually, for you, the better approach for in, in consideration of your age and all that stuff is going to be to take that scale away, eat more food and get stronger. Now I wouldn't say this to the sedentary 51 year old who hasn't cared about this or, or hasn't made this part of their life, but for you, you'll be way better off across, across the board. And, and you can give yourself 90 days. Say, look, I'm all right, fine. I'm not going to weigh myself for, uh, for 90 days. I'm not going to test anything for 90 days except for my strength. I'm going to go into bulk and I'm just going to focus on my strength. And then, and then here's what's going to happen. Watch the comments or compliments you get from the people around you. Watch it. About 30 days in, people are going to be like, oh my God, you're looking, what's going on? You look great. Wow. You look, you're, are you building or you look great or you know, you look so healthy. That's the compliments you're going to get from people. Okay. So give up the scale for 90 days. <laughs> Where's the scale? Is it in that gym with you? <laughs> No, I've got two. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, got you gotta get rid of both yeah. of them. I, I I do want to prepare you. Smashing. I do want to prepare you a little bit different than what Sal said, because uh, he did say. I I actually think it'll be hard. I actually think that you just like in an abusive relationship. You have no idea. Yeah, I do know. Oh, I do know. know. I know. And I and I, so I just want to oh. mentally prepare you for that. I think you're going I think like in an abusive relationship there's going to be this pull to go back and get beat still. Even though you know it's bad for you, you know you need to be away from it. You know on the other side is the better version of you, but in that initial period of almost being addicted to that thing, you will have, you'll have withdrawal. You'll have a struggle with it. And the, all the things are going to mess with you. The reflection in the mirror, the way yeah. your clothes fit yeah. you one day, you're going to have those. You're going to have that. And so right. you need to make peace with that. You need, what you need to realize is I'm 51. I'm this badass. Like I can go back and get it whenever I want. Like you, you, and let me tell you, you can, you've already proven that you've proven that you can be extremely lean, fit, strong, healthy, muscular at 51 years old. 
trust me, you can go get that again anytime you want, especially coming from a place of, I'm going to tell you to feed a surplus. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm only going to help your metabolism. I'm mm -hmm. only going to make your body feel even better. So it's only going to be that much more charged up to be able to get back where, where you're currently at if you need to or want to. So you just need to remind yourself that as you're going through this process, because the, the initial you know, uh, ripping the scale away will be difficult and will mess with your head. So be prepared for that. Be mentally prepared for that and set a goal of I'm not touching it for 90 days and, 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 and be competitive with yourself in that manner versus I'm going to do this. I'm going to trust Sal. And then when you start having those feelings, you're yeah, like, oh, you look fuck in the mirror, this you is put horrible. Jeans. Yeah. 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 Oh God, I got to go back. No, yeah. don't do that. Yeah, like, hand, give them to your trainer. What was his name again? Give those scales to your trainer. Tell him, give them to you in 90 days. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like he's asked me. He said, "Yeah, I will." Okay, okay. that's I, the plan. Yeah, I have a feeling if he's been listening to us for a long time, I'm sure he's probably giving you the same advice. Yeah, he sounds pretty good. He is giving me the exact same advice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. It it does help to hear it though again from you guys. So well, I appreciate it. And, and me, what's what's yeah. great, Deborah, is you actually. What's really nice is that you've invested in someone like that who gets it and is he's going to be the one to keep talking sense into you when you, mm -hmm. every time you want to leap. Like so, that's yeah. good. You have someone. He has incredible you know, amount of in your ear. Yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. You know, I am like the poster child for like why you need a good trainer <laughs> because I never would have gone down this road without his guidance and his coaching and his encouragement. That's awesome. So that's, right. that's awesome. He obviously, totally he's worth he's worth obviously done yeah. a great job because you look badass. Yeah. Yeah. So. De you know, Deborah, let me help you out. Let's, why don't we do a check in <laughs> in 90 days? You want to come back on the show? Yes, I'd love it. All right, it let's is. do it. 90, Accountability. Days, Here we 90 go. days from now, we're going to have you back on the show, and I'd love to hear all about the challenges, the successes, and the whatever, whatever happens. All right. All right. Deal. All right, Deborah. I'm nervous, but I'll do yeah, it. You let's got do it. You got this. Let's totally do it. You can do it. All right. All right, Deborah. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. She's going to, if she does it, she's going to love what happens. Well, she's yeah. obviously really disciplined. To oh, yeah. With, so this <laughs> is, I mean, it's all new discipline and, that she's got to figure out. And women need to know this. Like, uh, your you hormone issues are very common when you start to get real lean. Very few women can sit at seventeen percent or less and not not exhibit yeah. or have kind of hormone imbalance issues. Uh, it's not common. Any it's, lower just is probably not a good idea. No, no, no. and you, you, to sit there at least, right? Just yeah. to sit there for a while. You need body fat for balance in your body, both men and women. It's just a different percentage. For I mean, men and women. fifty one year old female, she's at peak what I would ever want to get to my client. Oh yeah, I know. I mean, it, this yeah, like right? she would That's be the shining example. Yeah, it's like this is like we could be this ripped. You could be in like any more than that. And you're right. We're going to dip into an, an unhealthy place. I think she knows all this. I yeah. think she's very aware. I think she knows it. She's got a good coach who's telling her yeah. telling her this. It simply is the is the trying to. And I tell you what, here's where investing in somebody is so. I mean, it's powerful no matter what. Oh, yeah. But when you recognize that you have a a, a a poor relationship with either exercise or nutrition or the scale it's in a this blind case, spot. yeah, you know it. Uh, having somebody else there to kind of keep you focused yep. and, and not fall back or not give back in is, is, is you, huge. You know what, Doug, why don't we invite them both into our, into our forum, the trainer and her, and then let's invite the trainer to the free trainer forum that we have. Yeah. Okay. If he's not already in there. Hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program map starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the starter bundle. That includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Sarah from Wisconsin. Hi, Sarah. How you doing, Sarah? How can we help hello, you? Hello, hello. Hi, guys. How you doing? What's Hi. Um, well, first of all, it's I'm very excited to be here. Um, it's a little bit surreal. Um, and of course, thank you for all your great content. Um, but I really have to thank my trainer, Josh, that introduced me to you guys. Um, and so I just want to shout him out, Josh Scherfinski from Lifetime in uh, Brookfield, Wisconsin. So, um, and I'll just read my question if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so it's been a few months, so I'll just update things as needed from my original email. Um, I'm a 47-year-old female, and I'm just over one year into my strength training journey. Um, I've always been fit and active. Um uh, I used to actually teach Pilates in my 30s, um, so I've just always had a, a fit lifestyle, um, but never really lifted weights. And um, I've seen incredible results, thanks to my trainer, Josh, um, and of course, listening to all of your content. 
So here's some background. Um, my stats when I started uh, just over a year ago, which was May of 2023, um, I was working full time at a very demanding job. Um, so I had no structured workout routine. I was, oh, and I'm five foot seven. Uh, I was about 162 pounds, 31% body fat. Um, pretty strong because of a Pilates yoga and orange theory. <laughs> yes, I know. It's okay, Adam. You don't have to say it. <laughs> um, background. I had no idea about the benefits of protein. I knew about whole foods and eating well, but didn't really understand um, hitting protein targets. My stats now, um, when I started this journey, I was blessed enough to not have to work anymore. So I do not work. Um, I'm very active. I get 10 to 12,000 steps per day. Um, I lift with uh, Josh twice a week, um, twice a week, almost every week, very diligently. Um, I also play pickleball uh, about two hours, three to four times a week. I'm incredibly addicted to pickleball. Um, I'm now at 150 pounds, 22% body fat. Um, I feel like I'm very strong. I benched 100 pounds. I was really excited about that. Um, I can do two consecutive um, body weight chin-ups with perfect form. And um, I recently, uh, I've never tested my one rep deadlift max, but I can do about 150 pounds for multiple reps for a couple of sets. Um, I do prioritize protein. Um, I try to get over 100 grams every day. I know I should be getting more than that, but sometimes it's really hard to choke it down. Um, I did recently have a Dutch hormone test just to see where I was um, because I am in my late 40s. So I just wanted to have a baseline. Am I going into menopause? I'm not. They said all my levels are optimal. Um, so on paper, I feel like I'm doing everything right. Um, my question is, can I lean out while eating my maintenance calories? Um, I did a cut several months ago. So this was about six months ago now. I went from 24 to 22% body fat, but I experienced major diet fatigue. Um, I went back to my maintenance calories, which is 22 to 2,400, and I've maintained that 22% body, body fat. And I've done that all summer, and I've maintained that all summer. Um, I think I thought when I got to this body fat percentage, I'd be happy with how I look aesthetically, but I still feel soft in areas. Um, I'm way stronger. I feel like I look really good in clothes, but I really want defined abs. Um, can I lose a couple more percent body fat without going on another cut? Uh, full disclosure, my weakness is wine. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, it's hey, the background. Listen, Great you're, question. <laughs> you're doing really good. Yeah, yeah. Your strength your workout programming is great. Two days a week of strength training, five days a week of pickleball. Your 22% body fat is a wonderful body it's fat ideal, percentage. To yeah. I'm looking at your pictures. You look amazing. You did a Dutch test, which is the best hormone test, uh, in my opinion. Everything looks balanced. You're doing exceptionally well. Now, I want some clarification. You said that you average around 100 grams of protein a day. I, so I was, when I was doing my cut, I got up to that 150 and I was really, my calories were mostly protein. I've pulled back on that a little bit. Sometimes it's just really hard to eat that much. Yeah. Um, and so I almost always get at least over a hundred grams. Okay. Um, I try for that 120 to 150. Um, but Every day, at least over a hundred. So you know okay. the, two, the two things that jump out. I right? know it's easy. Right. This is easy yeah. for me. If you were my yeah. clients, what I would have you do? I'd have you keep your calories at maintenance, but I'd bump your protein up to about 130, 140 grams a day. Yeah. That's it. Really? And what you'll get is a nice, slow lean out without diet fatigue, without <laughs> feeling any like you're pushing yourself too hard. Your body weight might might not even change because you'll probably build muscle as you learn body as you lose body fat. So literally, uh, hit 130 a day. Keep your calories where they're at, though. So you might have to cut out some some carbs and some fats to make up the difference. That's it. So it's a little bit of a transfer. It's not much. It's like 30 grams. A little bit of a transfer. And then it'll be a nice, slow process. I, I just want to stress why this is so important in the context of what you do. If you are doing 10 hours of cardio, pickleball, a week, and you're also having days where you miss protein, this is what's keeping us from building that muscle and leaning out, period. End of story. Like literally. Okay. And so if okay. you were my client and you loved pickleball that much, and but yet you really want these results, I would say, okay, the way you earn pickleball is by hitting your protein intake. And if you don't, you need to lay off. 
That's how I would I'd motivate you. Yeah, totally. I'd say, I love it. I love what you're doing. But if you want to get leaner and you want to see that, what is keeping us from that is all is missing protein in conjunction with also doing that much cardio. That much cardio wouldn't be that bad if you're eating in a, a surplus of protein. You'd probably be just fine. But it's the you probably miss some days when you're on the low end. And then in addition to that, we're doing quite a bit yep, of cardio. Yep. If you if you hit that, you're gonna see what you want. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You can, you can stick to whole natural foods and make a little bit of a transfer. All right, I'll cut some of the rice out or the potato or some of the olive oil or fat or whatever, replace it with some extra protein. Or you can make it easier on yourself. Uh, this is the less optimal way. But it's another way to do it. You add a 30-gram protein shake and then cut some calories somewhere else and make up the difference. But uh, the, now here's why I, want, I would want you to do it in this way in a nice, slow uh, fashion. Because you'll see a nice, slow lean out. You'll probably lose... One or two percent over the course of two months, or something like that, month and a half, two months, because you're doing so well and you're so healthy. I wouldn't want to mess with anything. Like I don't want to push too hard, yeah. okay, and throw things out, getting you leaner just so you can feel shittier and have your hormones go off a little bit. Like I, I don't. I, to me, that's not a good trade. Two percent body fat for hormone profile to be worsening and for you know feeling worse makes no sense to me. Uh, but if you do it nice and slow. Like I said, you're going to feel, you'll feel great. You'll feel just as good as you do now. And what you're going to notice is you're just going to change nice and slow and get leaner and, and build some muscle. I'd also have one more request. Uh, if you were a client of mine is, uh, I want to make sure good hour, hour to two hours before you're getting a good, good, big meal before that pickleball two hour session. And then at the one hour mark, I would love for you to have a ready to drink protein shake with you. Like that That'd would be, be one way to do it. that would be a, a great because you're two hours consistent of intense kind of cardio like that's a lot. And at, at when you start getting past that hour mark like that, the body's going like, oh, God, we need, we need something. And this is where it starts to use other sources yeah. uh, instead of just body fat, which is what you ultimately would just want to be utilizing. Yeah. It needs to be fed. So you need to break it up in, in at the hour mark or give or take right around that hour mark. Give yourself a ready to drink protein shake that's already ready to go, whether you make it yourself or you buy one. You know, uh, that now that be- you're saying that, Adam, uh, you know, 30 grams of protein, if you're averaging 100 and we go up 30 grams of protein, what is that, 120 cal- calories? Yeah. What is that? That's nothing. I don't even, don't even cut anything. Just add 30 grams of protein. Just literally, just do, just literally add the thirty gram shake, like Adam said. Yes, and do nothing else. You'll be, you'll be fine. I that, think that's I, an easy way to do th- it. This is literally the only thing that is is hindering us right now. It's yeah. it's the two hours of cardio with probably also not hitting protein it, it, optimal numbers yeah. consistently. You do that, and you're going to see a world of a difference. Yeah. So but this is one of those few times a supplement will make the difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally, I think 120 calories <laughs> extra isn't going to isn't going to make you gain any body fat. Mm-mm. But the extra 30 grams of protein. Okay. Perfect. And the way Adam just positioned it, I think that'd be perfect. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, I get really good sleep. I'm an excellent sleeper. Thank God. <laughs> um, and I take my creatine and my electrolytes and oh, you're good. all the things. So yeah, I can, I can do that. That's easy. You're doing great. Yeah, you, really, you really are doing great. These are like little tweaks. You could also change nothing and just keep kicking ass. You're yeah, doing yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, you add a little extra protein. <laughs> you'll probably, you'll, you'll go down. One to two percent body fat just from doing that. You you would also just so just so you know, like you would benefit from like a like real traditional strength training bowl. Can we put all of our energy towards that? But you already said to me you love pickleball, and I would never want to take that from you because yeah, it's good for you. And too. you're doing good. Twenty. You know, well, yeah. I I kind of want Josh and I've talked about doing a bulk because I've talked about maybe doing like a powerlifting competition because okay. I've seen my strength get up and I'm I feel like I have more that I can do. Um, but that just makes me real nervous. So yeah. I, I, I mean, you you would really bet you would, but I don't like taking something that an activity that you love doing that's good for yeah. you, like yeah. pickleball. Like you're enjoying. Always it. think you're quali- healthy. You're good. Think quality of life, longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Too. But if, if we're if we're purely talking from a, I want to see my abs. I like more muscle. Like that standpoint, yeah, you would you would benefit from doing a all strength focus type of training program, scaling way back on all the pickleball and really trying to bulk, trying to get strong and then coming back to a cut, reintroducing pickleball and that, that would serve you. But again, I, I, when a client is really enjoying activity like that, I try my best at what, how could I modify to kind of have our cake and eat it too? I think in this situation, yeah. it's adding the protein shake in between the yeah. two hour uh, pickleball session should make a world of a difference. Yeah, and, and think again, think quality of life. Like it, 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 I think you have a really good quality of life. It sounds like, 
I think adding a protein shake is it. That's it. I, that's almost never it. Yeah, but that's it. But mm-hmm. with you, that's pretty much it. Like you add a 30 gram, 40 gram protein shake, and you'll just it'll be a nice slow transfer, body fat and muscle. Nice and slow over a two month period or so. Okay. Amazing. All right, thank Sarah. you so much. You All got right, it. And, hey, and thank you for shouting out your trainer. I love it when people shout out good trainers because we know what an impact it makes. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, he's amazing. All right, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We're just getting people doing great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's the, I love it. It's a high five day. I mean, this, yeah, listen, that is. is what a great place to be for her. Well, you, you know, know? The, com- the common thing between those two, right? They the both got trainer. good, tra- good trainers, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? I swear, when Take pe- notes. people look at the money that they spend on all kinds of ways to try to lose weight and whatever, if you took that and just invested it in a good trainer or coach for like a few months, mm-hmm. the, the 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 effects would last you a lifetime just from mm-hmm. what you learn and from the guidance. It's just so valuable. And you see it. You see it when people work with a good trainer. Yeah. You know, this is too like a, a, a great s- scenario because there's different things that we can do here. And like, and I really would have to weigh out if she was my client, we're spending more time together. If she was like, man, Adam, I really want to see the abs. I really want to, she's telling me that then you would hear me start to encourage her like, well, you know, I know you love pickleball. Which one do you love more? Do you love pickleball a lot more? Or do you Mm -hmm. really want to see the abs more? Okay. Well then maybe we scale back a little bit of that. Let's increase protein. Let's go on a bulk. Let's try and follow something like maps, power lifter strong and build a bunch of muscle. And then we come back the other way and I can reintroduce the pickleball. Like I would encourage you, but when you got someone who's got a really good, like you said, you can hear, you can hear it in her voice. You can see it in her glow in her face. It's like, she's sleeping great. I mean, she's, she's doing really good. You hate to mess that up yeah. just for some abs totally <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's totally. like and abs aren't don't bring happiness everybody no, thinks to make you so happy it doesn't yeah, no no she's doing great our next caller is josh from the united kingdom josh what's up man what's happening josh hello hello nice to see see you guys i just wanted to start off with a ritual by thanking everyone on mind pump for the present impact you have on the fitness space like you are to me and many others that the most credible source of non-biased information on the internet Thank you. Just want to get out there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. I will um, revert to my original email, even though my my situation has changed since then, because it was a while ago. But my background is since COVID, I've taken control of my health, but struggled with my relationship to food that's resulted in yo-yo dieting. But every time I've relapsed, I've been self-aware of the mistakes, got back up and zeroed in on my habits to eliminate the hard falls. I've dropped a total of 56 pounds in four years. And my que- my questions relate to the current situation, the current situation at the time, as I've been on a cut for my last diet fall since New Year. But my my work routine has also changed to night shift. I've had no trouble with the diet or the exercise or the consistency, as I've rode the strain more than once. But my sleep, which was good at the start of the cut, has gradually declined, and I'm now getting maybe four to five hours of sleep on my working days and eight on the weekend, eight to ten. I want to know what the relationship between cutting calories for extended periods of time are with your hormones and sleep. And if you think the combination of my work shift is making this situation worse and what I should do about it. Okay. I'll give you a quick, on from that. My cur- yeah, I was gonna yeah, go give, on. I'll give you a quick answer for that, Josh, but then I'd like to know what your situation is now afterwards. But, but yeah, but right. what's the relationship between cutting calories and hormones and sleep? Well, if, if they, they tend to make them worse. Okay. Generally speaking, if your cut is too long, too extended, um, then you start to see negative effects on the hormones. Now, there's caveats there, right? Like if you're really obese and you're just overeating and not doing well and you clean things up, you tend to see things get better on both. But if it's too extended for too long, then your hormones, testosterone drops, growth hormone goes down, cortisol goes up, um, and sleep starts to get disrupted uh, as well um, in ways that are like extreme fatigue but restless uh, at the same time type of deal. But not, not, I'd like to know now what you what what yeah, it, what it looks like now, and and is there a different question now? Uh, yeah, it's kind of following on. I'm kind of like not know what my goal is now. Whether to let me just read what I've written down. It's in the current situation since I emailed has changed. I've come off of night shift. Thank God, like it was only temporary for some training in my work, and my sleep's returned to normal, which is great. Like I've I was always pretty consistent before, and. Uh, I, because I put it through hell, it literally felt like I'd been battered within an inch of my life for doing night shift for six months. I reckon I was losing about a night's worth of sleep a week. And and 
Uh, and I was just sorry. I'm just trying to read what I don't know. Uh, I've put on a bit of weight since I've come back out of night shift, but it's because I've been either just listening to my body or I've been a bit less consistent in the gym. But I've just been trying to like please please every aspect of my life it, because it was so so shattering to do what I did well nights. But I was like, I just want to listen to my body, eat when I feel like it. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's where I've been since then. And every time I've tried to get in the rhythm of losing those eight pounds again, I've not really seen much difference on the scale. And I just feel that like my metabolism has been hammered from what I've done to my body or, or maybe my hormones have crashed. Yeah, uh, maybe. How long ago was it that you stopped the night shift? Six months. Uh, in June. So I did, I did from the start of January to the middle of June. Okay, so a couple months. Um, okay, and it sounds like you gave yourself a mental break afterwards. Which is what you what it sounds like when you said, "Yeah, kind yeah. Of eat what you want, and you need that. You need that when you come out of something like that." All right, how do you get back into it? You you just get on something consistent and don't overdo it. That's it, and just stay consistent and don't worry about the scale. Don't worry about what's going on. Your body will start to balance itself out. But you're right. If you're losing an, a, a night's worth of sleep every week over a six month period, yeah. it's probably going to take you. 90 days or longer it's a while to get reacclimated. Yeah. To start to recover. There's a lot that happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, that, they even show data that the brain shrinks and mm -hmm. the, the body literally starts to change over that period of time. You see this with like new mothers, uh, in the first year, it ravages the body and then it takes like a year or two for them to come back. So I like maps 15 here. Maps 15 would be for great. Sure. That's yep. a great way to work out right now. Maps 15 advanced yeah, version, yeah. hit your protein targets, avoid processed foods and just be consistent. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I play a lot of a lot of soccer or football, like, as we call it, as well. So I've, it's not that I haven't been exercising since I come off nights, but I've I've been constantly doing that kind of cardio thing, maybe two hours a week of that. But my gym's just kind of been like that because I was doing it when I was on nights. The thought of doing it now with how I felt then was just like I kind of I've probably avoided it per se, but I'm just trying to find uh, a reason to get back into it and get get going again. I just feel like my body's changed since I was last in a good place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it did change, but it'll come mm -hmm. back. You're yeah. young and you just got yeah. out of it. Yeah, it yeah. just happened in June. <laughs> maps 15 and, and doing your soccer is perfect, man. Do yeah. map maps 15 yeah. and, and hit your protein intake. Like Sal said, and, and you're good to go. Do you have maps 15 yet? Uh, no, I've got uh, anabolic and I bought it when I was on nights and then I started to go on a big decline, like yeah. just all around in my life. So I didn't, yeah, well, I didn't even bother starting it. If I was honest, it would have yeah. just killed me. The frequency element to mass 15 is really going to be helpful for you to help your body kind of get back to that, that transition it needs. So this is going to be a good momentum yeah, yeah, yeah. for you. It's really, it's about the frequency and like, you know, re-educating your body yep. as to what, you know, it, it is the proper dose yeah. of, of stimulus. By, by the way, so, at the, at the end of the cycle of mass 15. So after you complete the program, go right into maps anabolic. You yep. should be okay by them. Yep. Yeah. So you guys don't think that, my metabolism's adapted in that time. Yeah, yeah, I did, but yeah. it's going to adapt back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just... Yeah. Yeah. It's not okay. optimal yet. We'll get there. No, no, no. How old are you? Yeah. Uh, 24. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. You're totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. It was only six months. You just got out of it in June. Yeah. Uh, if You're probably just now starting to feel like maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel. It takes a second to recover yeah, from yeah, something yeah. like that. Like People underestimate just how damaging... Uh, loss of sleep is to the body. A full eight hours to to nine hours of sleep lost a week is a lot, especially on a consistent yeah. basis. Yeah, it, it's a lot for sure. What kind of work is it, by the way? What, what, what required you to do that? I work for an aerospace company, so they're kind of 24-hour production around the clock, like fabricating components yeah. for, uh, for like Airbus and GKN and those kind of big, those big league companies. So they've got, they've got a around the clock kind of system. You, you'll feel back to normal probably by the end of Mass 15. Yeah. Yeah, all right. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, because I felt literally instantly better when I came off nights once my sleep had returned. Oh, but yeah. in terms of every time I dieted and, or lost weight or put on weight, I just wasn't seeing the same rhythm or consistency that I was last time. And I just feared that I'd done something to my body with burning through that hell. You, d you did do something to your body, yeah. but it's not permanent. It not not yeah. by any stretch You're of the right. imagination. Yeah, right. Not at all. Yeah. You're good, bro. You're going to be fine. Yeah, all right. <coughs> yeah, thank we'll, you. We'll thank send you. Yeah, I didn't need that kind of reassurance. So. Yeah, we'll send Mass 15 over to you, brother. You got it. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Thank yep. you very much. You got it, man. All right, Josh. Take all it right. easy. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, hopefully speak to you soon. I'll, yeah. 
if I could, I would ask you about a million questions now, but this obviously just not possible. So, yeah, do, yeah. do you know what I mean? Right. You got to come Thanks. back oh, on, well, Thank you, guys. Thanks, right, Josh. Yeah, I will. Yeah, especially at 24. I, I, I probably lost, I don't know, I lost that much sleep for years in my 20s <laughs> and it took a long time to recover from it oh, man. but you recover you, you do recover even if you're a older you yeah i remember when courtney was on the night shifts for when oh, she was nursing god. and it was like Brutal. oh my god because even then during the day you're trying to sleep and it's like you get interrupted by the dogs by like mm -hmm. you know somebody coming by the house and so yeah just to, to transition back took months I don't know if that is worse or what i what i put myself through in high school was uh flip-flopping in the week so I had That's two. Nasty, I had two shifts Ooh. of the week. Were so it was when I was milking cows, right? So you milk cows twice a day. Yeah, and it's at four o'clock. So it's either four a.m. or four p.m. And so <laughs> two of the shifts I ran at the four p.m. time. The other two shifts are at the four a.m. time. Oh yeah. So like I have it. Yeah. <laughs> you're but in I mean, two different worlds. When you're young like that, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you your body rebounds. He'll yeah. be okay. You know, he feeds himself properly. Gets on a program like Mass Fifteen. You know, the right dose for him. Mm -hmm. Like he'll rebound. It's only a matter of time. All right. I know you like that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range right of like body types yeah some people can run uh a little bit heavier uh and or a little bit higher body